What's up and welcome back to Kind of Funny's Ghostbusters in Review. That's right. We are ranking and reviewing every Ghostbusters movie. As always, I'm Tim Geddes, joined by Game Over Greggy himself, Greg Miller. Good evening. How are you, Timothy? I'm doing fantastic. The big dog, Kevin Coelho. How's that? It's it. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> There's no reason to laugh that much about no, it. There really you know what I mean? Like, it's okay to laugh. I'm not mad about that you part. You have no idea like, how much I'm enjoying this. No, we I, get this, it. I think no, we actually it's get it. So I much think more than you think. Yeah, you think on the page. you know. You think you know. It's but a fraction, Nick. Okay. Producer slash producer Nick Scarpino is joining Has, us as well. I, I respect the shirt you're wearing here, Tim. Is this a Britney Spears shirt? Yeah. That's amazing. Give him a sign. They sold out in in my size large, so it's extra large, and so the shoulder things are way too That's low. That's what all the cool kids are wearing these days. They're wearing eh. the oversized t-shirts, the oversized pants, the oversized glasses, the oversized socks, the oversized bracelets, the oversized rings, the oversized earrings, the oversized eyebrows, the oversized hair. Yeah, I knew yeah. he was going to lose it at some point. And once you get to eyebrows, that's what I was like. <laughs> I, was literally, I was like, literally. We had to say two yeah. types of rings. It's like, honestly, oh, we're getting there. Bro. Honestly, <laughs> went way longer than I thought he would. Totally. <laughs> totally. Of course, that is yeah. the voice of the Nitro Rifle, Andy Cortez. Hello. 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 God bless all of us in such different ways. We're in different a mood. Ways. We're in yes. a fucking mood right now, and I love yeah. it. It's a good mood, everybody, because this mood. is Kind of Funnies in Review, where each and every week we get together to rank and review two of our favorite movie franchises. You can watch it on YouTube.com slash Kind of Funny or RoosterTeeth.com. If you want to get it as a podcast, just search your favorite podcast service for Kind of Funny in Review, and we'll be right there for you. If you want to get the show ad-free and watch it live as we record it, you got to go to Patreon.com slash Kind of Funny, and we appreciate each and every one of you that do that. Uh, today, we are talking about Ghostbusters 2. With a runtime of one hour and 48 minutes, it was released on June 16th, 1989, five years after the first movie. Uh, production was rushed compared to the original film's already rushed 13-month cycle. Large sections of the film were scrapped after poorly received test screenings. New scenes were written and filmed during reshoots between March and April 1989, only two months before the film's release. Oh, Greg, I didn't even notice that you were wearing that, and I love you so much for doing it. Of course, of course. It wasn't utilized enough, but still cool. The alt still. color variant? Actually, that's one of the things I like about the film is that they just kind of slide that in there. They've got a second color variant outfit. It's cool. That's Why not? Cool. You know what I mean? They're just going to go. The movie's Use already just the, the movie's just the live-action cartoon. They might as well just slide in new suits left and right. <laughs> Uh, this was once again directed by Ivan Reitman, and uh, music was done this time by uh, Randy Edelman. Not yeah. to be confused with Randy Newman or nice. the former producer of Ghostbusters 1, Elmer Bernstein. So Randy Edelman was responsible for the film's original score. It was one of Edelman's first experiences working with a large-scale orchestra. And although familiar with Ghostbusters, he chose not to rewatch it for inspiration. So the sequel uh, would have its own unique sound. Edelman what? believed the distinct Why? personalities of the existing characters meant they rarely needed a musical accompaniment and instead focused his efforts on scoring the supernatural. And that's why the score of this movie is fucking down white, down right weird and it's so, so many terrible it's, <laughs> it, it, it sucks too because a lot of the original score set the tone and it's and and because like obviously the acting and the, and the and the pacing of what they were doing was there on screen when they filmed it and as was the edit but the the score served to back that up and served to really is like served to really punctuate that whereas in this it's just it, it just feels like it's all over the place and none of it feels like the original ghostbusters I, it's What's like if you were to do if it's general, like if right? you were to do Jurassic Park two and not use the John Williams score. You're like, why would you not? Why would you not do it? Or Star Wars and be like, let's not use the John Williams score. Like, why? Why would you not go back to that? Because for this me, is, sound ties everything so well in together. This is bigger than you. It's okay to sort of check your ego at the door and not make, not try to like just add to it, you know. But keep the keep the core stuff there, you know. Mm -hmm. It's that idea of, you know, I want to do, I want to come in and, I, you know, how, how do you follow something as big as Ghostbusters 1 and so successful? You know, I don't want to mimic, I will come in and do my own thing. And that is a wrong decision. Yeah, <laughs> People good. didn't come to this movie being like, you know what I want? A brand new weird orchestral score that has some weird now, stuff going on and then Bobby Brown's in uh, it. And then okay, we got Run no, DMC but here's, on top of it. here's where I will, here's where I'll just slightly disagree with you because the that song is a soundtrack is dope. Don't get me wrong. You know I love the it. The Bobby Brown song is a slap, dude. Well, I guess we're gonna have 
to take control. We got a god, a god. You know, that was the most in sync two of us singing has been since we're trying. It's hard. Shout out to you guys. You had to like both kind of slow down word by word, but you Mm -hmm. you nailed it together. So thank you, Tim. Congratulations. That's that's the teamwork. It's like three in the morning. Both in it. If you want something bad, y'all. Now imagine little Greggy jamming out to this record in his yes. in his bedroom because he was six folks. foot two little Greggy, <laughs> <laughs> just high waisted pants, just trying to dance to Bobby Brown song. <laughs> five five <laughs> foot eleven, eight year old who had this who had the face of a four year old, <laughs> look like fucking Robin Williams from Jack. <laughs> <laughs> we had him yeah. Oh, I was having Went a good so time. So much further than, than like any other joke he's done this week. Uh, this had a budget of forty million dollars and a box office of two hundred and fifteen million, making it the eighth highest grossing film of the year, but still a letdown compared to the expectations uh, for the sequel to the then highest grossing comedy of all time, which hit two hundred and eighty four million. Um, this movie does pass the Bechtel test, but just barely. Again. Um, yeah, exactly. Because of Janine and Janine uh, and Dana have a conversation yeah. about taking care of the baby. Yeah. Uh, it's very brief, but it does, in fact, happen. So it does. It does. Hey, at least they're in the room together longer man, this time, though, right? They're in the room together longer. Yeah. That's not part of the test, but, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. There's a conversation there involved. It, it's about the baby, but it's also about do you want us to go or whatever. They also, it's there. They're talking. Right? Yeah. Don't I, yeah. I feel hey, like it, the male, it, it's a male baby they're talking about. So doesn't that Oscar. mean that yeah, but that, about that's what. That's what we're talking about. That's like that. It's, it's different. You know what I think it feels like romantic. I don't even have to go that romantic. far. If you're trying to poke holes in this, it's two women talking about a baby. And we're like, see, empowerment. Like, no, that's not how that would work. <laughs> Greg Miller, I want to start yeah. with you. What did you think of Ghostbusters 2? I don't, we, you didn't start with me last time, right? Like, I don't, like, uh, obviously. All right, fine, I mean, fine. I will start with Nick Scarpino. Um, you know, I like Ghostbusters 2, obviously. I think it's an entertaining movie, but it is it is like everyone got together and and just decided to make what they like they they basically said, what are the commercial aspects of Ghostbusters? Let's enhance those and let's those are gonna be the things that people like, right? The kids love this, kids love Slimer, kids love all of these things. But this is what always kills me with a lot of these sequels, specifically with the eighties, is that they actually they just missed the point of what made everyone really love Ghostbusters, mm-hmm. which was the dry tone, the seriousness with which they took the material, um, the 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 camaraderie between the guys, but also the characters of the first movie are distinctly different in this one with the exception I would would argue of Peter Venkman who just kind of seems like a little bit more exaggerated and slightly happier version of himself but like the guy that the the person that kills me in this movie every single time is Egon Harold Ramis just is not the same character that he was in the first one and it sucks because it throws off the chemistry of the group like Dan Aykroyd is a little bit more zany but Harold Ramis like winking at the camera and like and like burning the lens and doing all those things that he does like all the little asides makes it feel so much more slap sticky where he was like the the sort of straight man for all of everyone else leonardo answers. yeah you know i mean he was just like if you go back and watch that's why i said like last time we did um one of the, the first review i was like he doesn't smile all in the first ghostbusters movie maybe he cracks a little bit of a smile but he doesn't his character doesn't get the humor of everyone else's character and pete is sarcastic but in this one it's like all of them are some some iteration of Peter Venkman, which is just it's just too much. And the movie over the to- overall is just completely over the top. And don't even get me started on Andy Potts's wig. Wow, <laughs> is it a wig? Uh. I don't know. Wigging out with Scarpino. What's up, everybody? Welcome to a podcast within a podcast called Wigging Out with Scarpino. Of course, uh, Greg knows this piece of trivia, and I'm sure Tim has it as well. Uh, Janine's hair was changed so that it would look a lot more like Janine from the cartoon series, thus uh, necessitating this god-awful wig they put on her. Annie Potts, still killing it, though, in this. Crushing. Love, love Annie Potts in this. And I'll be honest with you, Greg, and this is a question I have for everyone, but mostly just for Greg. Thank you. I used this used this scene with her and Lewis used to irk me a little bit. Why? And, I, and now I'm not mad at it. I'm not mad at it. It's because I used to have a roommate, then my mom moved to Florida. <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind that they're together. But sure. I always in the back of my brain, I'm like, it should have been Egon and Janine. They had the this heat they had, Get out the of heat here. they had in number one. I was like, what happened to this storyline? But I digress. At it's least Rick Moranis is phenomenal it's every single no time interest. he does anything. You're not wrong. I mean, obviously, but again, it's to the same point of like, 
I mean, you know, the movie is the cartoon. The movie is so influenced by the real Ghostbusters and the popularity of it, right? Of giving us all these more grounded things of even Slimer being helpful and just hanging out at the firehouse for one frame than helping Lewis in another, right? Like, that's why they lean into her being the red hair, being a bit more crazy. I don't think, like, uh, you know, the Janine, the Janine and Egon we had in one aren't the Janine and Egon we get in two, as you've already talked about with Egon, right? So it just puts it into a different place. And that's what I'll be fascinated about what happens here in Afterlife. Obviously, Janine, one of the the f- Janine, the only character we've actually seen full frontal of, like right. that. Bam, that's Janine. We know it's right. Janine. She's talking, right? Not Ray picking up the phone and we've saying we're closed. Voice, yeah. yeah, we have, we've seen her talking about Egon in the trailer, right? Is that because they continue to have a relationship beyond you know this? And if so, what does that mean for Lewis? Do we anything about that? We'll see. Andy Cortez, what do you think? Um, I thought it started off really strong, and then I just found my interest waning in it as it went on. I. I kind of, I liked Egon in this movie. I think a lot of that deadpan humor is still there. Uh, there are some really good uh, deliveries from him and from the rest of the of the cast and crew. Um, I, I just enjoy those little small moments of levity whenever they can fit him in. And you can tell a lot of it isn't written. You can tell a lot of it is still improv. But uh, the enjoyment factor is still there for me. I just found myself like, I don't know, I wish they sort of restructured the story in a way that um, it felt like every Spider-Man movie that we one. love where the authority is always trying to keep them from mm-hmm. ghost busting. And may, I, I wish that whole sequence near the beginning where the two uh, ghost brothers like are in the judge or the, the Scalari uh, brothers. Yeah. The Scalari brothers. I wish all Tried of that was sort murder. of, I wish that was pushed near the end because I would have liked them. I would have liked the uh, the majority of the movie to be them sort of trying to do things undercover, oh, wow. uh, just like they did with the sewer stuff, and then sort of have the the Dana baby moment be that sort of catalyst of like we need to they need us back like mm-hmm. we need to go back out there and I don't care what the authorities say to us we need to do this uh, similar to a lot of our favorite Spider Man moments where it's always you know, uh, go get, we're after Spider-Man. He's a, he's a menace or whatever. And then he still has to sort of do the thing to save the day. Um, it just felt a little imbalanced for me. And yeah, I, I just, towards the end of it, I just found my interest going lower and lower. And by the time I was in the Statue of Liberty, I just didn't really care a whole lot. Yeah, I think overall I liked it fine. Uh, I think that... Uh... I I like the way they structured it. Like I really like that it's it's like the movie starts and it's years in the future. It's and they the Ghostbusters has gotten all broken up and they're kind of trying to deal with the consequences of not getting paid and like ghosts not being such a big problem, which I think was really cool and like builds the world of like kind of before the Ghostbusters it wasn't a big problem and so it makes sense that after this huge phenomenon it also cooled down. Um, I, I thought that like the, you know, the cartoonish Egon, like I thought he was fine. Uh, and I, I like the, the dynamics that they had with, uh, Egon and, uh, what's the other kid? Ray, the, Winston, Peter, Oscar. Ray, Ginny. with Ray. And like th- them being, thank you very much. That was very helpful, by the way. <laughs> Ray, uh, well, I didn't get know, on the first one. I was like, gotta yep. keep going. Here we go. Who else could it be? <laughs> <laughs> them like being the, like the you know scientists trying to figure it all and and then peter coming back um just like kind of sneak his way back into the to, to, um the woman's uh, sigourney dana's weaver's heart, character's yeah. life yeah dana that thing which you. by the way i li- i mean i like i like their relationship more in this I like, their relationship. I feel like yeah. peter's yeah. less creepy and less skeezy and a little bit yep. more charming and nice and like he's he's more cuddly in this yeah um but I just like when you look at the actual movie, it's kind of a ripoff of the first movie, right? Toward especially yes. the third act, well, they get thrown in jail. Then there's a big thing that walks, and then they kind of easily beat the enemy with but, the proton packs. <laughs> so I, I feel like uh, when we were watching the first movie, and you guys kind of talked about what the the dream was for Ghostbusters, of like starting at the tail end of of the 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 company like existing well, was for the a original while draft of the script right yeah i get that feeling like they they put they that into that this year, yeah. quite a bit and i i thought it worked out like them doing the party uh scene in the beginning like i love that i also loved the the them becoming useful again and the whole um i i liked where it was placed that end of the first act being the point where they can be ghostbusters again then yeah they're going back and, and starting to get popular again 
I, I, I overall, I, I thought this was a fine movie. But for me, the party scene, and I, I love the party scene. I think it's a funny beat, and obviously, it's hilarious. You're like a young uh, uh, Jason Reitman in that scene. But like, it's it breaks the world right off the oh, bat. See, because me, they, that, they're, the they're dancing to the theme song of the first movie. And you're like, well, wait a minute. That doesn't make any sense. That wasn't a song to me that, in like, reality. That showed, yeah. No, yeah, it just to exists me, in their world because they were this phenomenon, right? Again, right? Like, I think what you're going to see, I mean, Paul, and I'm not just kind no, of cribbing notes I mean, from it's Afterlife. Literally, like, if Luke Skywalker was, like, at the bar at Tatooine and he was like, bang. This is an yeah. advertisement thing for a bunch of guys who have been selling out for as long as possible. Yeah, that's like, I'm sure I... in this universe, if Ray Parker Jr. is like, we want to, I want to write, fucking do Fair. it, write a song about us, please. We'll use it in the, the commercials. Wait. So I really get the feeling that after they saved New York, they did have a couple years on top. Sorry, my, my headphones are echoing really bad. They had a couple years on top where they were like, their commercial became like a pop like i'm sure that someone made a song of it and that's what they're doing you know singing that song um so like i don't know that made all sense and it also it's just very, it's it just very like self-aware and that's what this movie is this movie like is trying very, to capitalize of what they have left if, because they can't be ghostbusters i i like that i i i like that that made I mean, the, the tone of the whole city being like they raising moved his on. hand over there nick let him get in here but let him get off the bench go ahead andy, andy what okay. do you got i i one of my problems with it, it, it's not that I don't, I don't mind that the songs in the world. What I mind is people still calling them kooks and doubting them. I feel like that doesn't make a whole lot of sense if they're. You mean this, something that happened five years ago in New York that almost destroyed the city, and everyone's like, "That can't fucking be it, real." You're it, like, it, Andy, just remember, yeah, we're in the middle of a pandemic that people are like, oh, "COVID's not real." Yeah, like but it's happening. People are I'm, dying right now. I mean, it, like, you know, not to draw the comparison, but like if something cataclysmic happened in San Francisco five years later, people would be like, I, it With would be footage. very hard pressed yeah. for people to be like that. Never. That never happened. Like Guaranteed, if Salesforce like, Tower people, exploded with ghosts, I'd be like, guys, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But like you have to remember, there are people now that are like the Holocaust wasn't real. Kevin, but yes. that's just that's a dumb comparison. Like, that I, was, I, I was, is it? <laughs> well, what I'm saying is like, ago, and they're using that to be politicized. And I no, get that this I mean, guy I'm, was like, yeah, but dude, it's five fucking well, years saying, ago. Like after, nobody after five years after years the Holocaust ago, was like, did it oh, I'm a hundred percent sure there's lots of people that were like, in that, Germany? no way that was real. Huh? No, I didn't say in Germany. But they're like, in New okay. York. That's like, yeah, I mean, right. drawing right. the parallel, like calling it what it is. Like that would be like five years after 9-11. Someone would be like, that never happened. You're like it, yes, it did. Like this is ridiculous. That would be so, it's so absurd. There's no so like, deniers talk about right. The or one, people, if we can slow, there are people who deny world. what it was about, but nobody fuck. Or go the, fuck. Yeah. The, the Twin Towers aren't there anymore. Yeah, we can right. bring you're it right. down one you're notch right. and give right. Greg Miller right. the Ghostbusters Jesus expert Christ. the floor here. All right, is I think we're uh, moving with the modern take of information. If it is the it is 1984. The Ghostbusters have reversed the doors and thrown everything back, right? The evidence people have is the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man, which by no stretch of the imagination am I saying isn't a great amount of evidence as to paranormal activity being real or anything like that. But it is before the age of cell phones. I don't know how many news cameras. There's no. There's nobody in a helicopter up there filming Ghostbusters fighting uh, Gozer. She's out doing her thing, seeing into another dimension, doing that. There, there's a subway ghost. There's a ghost eating hot dogs. There's a ghost. I'm not saying... Don't get me wrong. I'm very much of the thing of even as a kid being like, really? The mayor is going to turn on these the fucks? The fucking the mayor, mayor is like, I don't the like these guys. They're the world? <laughs> yeah, the guy that got reelected because they yeah. saved. Also, it was ridiculous. So just, to, just to explain, like, I, I obviously people like can't say that 9-11 was fake. I was just saying people are saying the like the the you know the government was involved there are conspiracy theorists it. Yes, behind conspiracy it that's what you're yes that I, I that mean. is yeah. very true and sorry to get heated about that but this is just one of those things that like it doesn't make any sense in the world and and unfortunately for me it's just there is a it's kind of a crutch for them to get into some sort of trouble and have some sort of obstacle to overcome in the third act um, yeah, yeah i think they do a good job of setting up the fact that the people just like don't believe them because there hasn't been ghosts for five years or for however many, two years, whatever it was. So it's just like, cool, that might have happened, but there wasn't, a, a lot of people that are here now weren't there then. And even the people that were there then are like, well, you solved the problem, so we don't need you anymore. And when right, new problems come up, are you creating those problems? Yeah, but there's that, but there's the one guy who's the, the William Atherton character in this, right? Yeah. But then it's like, the mayor is, like, slime starts coming out of walls, and the mayor's like, I don't know. And you're like, 
No, you would know. Like you would know. You were like, "Get me the fucking ghost." Well, see, that's wish. the thing about it. Where that's the the disconnect for <laughs> me. And, and, and to Nick's earlier point, which is 100 uh, percent prudent, right? That it's just the same fucking movie again. Like the fact that the mayor has to be in another room, having everything explained to him of why it's going wrong, and he's like, "All right, I need the ghost bus. Like, no, we did this. Like, yeah, I, I understand you're talking to Philip Laguardia in your bedroom or whatever. Fine, but like you, you saw the walls in the 34th precinct bleeding before, right? Like, you know what I mean? Like, I would have thought. You would have stood up for these guys. And maybe he's just an asshole anyway. You know what I mean? But it's just a weird reset for a couple of different characters and motivations, I feel. That yeah, should have I, been people who would have carried out and been like, yeah, you know what? This is cool. Yeah, what, what I was going to say is like, I wish that there were I wish that there were other reasons for why they were being held down. And I, I, I wish they kept on sort of hammering the what you all are doing. Sure, it saved us, but it's really dangerous and yeah, you know, whatever it, it costs this amount of destruction. I kind of wish that that the was the angle they kept playing was instead of the. Yeah, uh, I don't know. You guys are you guys are kooky, man. Like, well, what the fuck? Like, I don't know. That just threw me off. Anyway, that's yeah, what I wanted the, to the, say. They should have doubled down on the. You know, you got we got sued by every state, county, or city, city, mm. state, county in in you know in New York, and that's why we're under this judicial restraint order. Where we can't do any of our stuff, and yet, like that would have been, I think, a, a more. Oh yeah, I can see where everybody would have sued them and blamed them, and they're caught up trying to figure that out more than. Even the judge being like, we don't recognize ghosts. It's like, but like, don't you remember yeah. <laughs> like, all the like, shit that we went you've through? Been like, you've been, you've been here for five years. Five years. I, I feel like that the stuff that we saw didn't happen everywhere. Like, True. a couple and million I, again, people. I, again, to yeah. your point, I, your point yeah. I, I, from a 1984 perspective, I think you can understand we're all hanging out. Kevin shows up at the bar and he's like, dude, I was walking down Fifth Avenue and this hot dog cart, this green thing came out of and flew away. And we're like, ah, you're fucking full of it. Yeah, we saw this marshmallow man gimmick. On, like, first off, it's a publicity stunt for the marshmallows, clearly. Yeah. Clearly, yeah. that's it. Right. The yeah. Ghostbusters yeah. probably got hired and paid off by Stay Puft Corporation to do this too. And you're like, no, I fucking saw but a like, ghost eat hot And also dogs. there was 300 people on the ground floor looking up as lights and lasers we're shooting out of a thing right. and there was a gigantic explosion on the top of the building. Like, I feel like stuff like that would have definitely Again, cemented gig- the fact oh, that. Oh, shit. There was gigantic. a gigantic yeah, explosion. And remember that big ass bear that fell like, oh, was a bear or a wolf what, what, that ran out of a hotel? You know, like, there's there's a lot you have any more stuff of here. It? Well, I think, I mean, there's probably news footage of the fucking 30 story Stay Puff Marshmallow Man. But is there? The street somewhere. We yeah, don't know that. that. They do show them filming it, but again, I'm saying that. that, (laughs) Think think about about, about it for a second. I mean, granted, we are wasting so much time on something so meaningless, but it's fun to argue about this, right? Because I'm with you. I would see any of that and be like, they fucking, it's even afterlife, right? I don't give a shit that it's been 40 years. Like, how the fuck wouldn't you know one of the coolest things that ever happened? The same of Marshall Man was sentient and got blown up, right? But think about it from even your perspective, Andy, where it's like, there's lights and lasers shooting off this thing. All right, well, you weren't up there. You didn't see it. Well, there was a giant explosion. Oh my God, how many people died? Well, Nobody. The four people who were up there, they're okay, and they're the Ghostbusters. And it's like, you know what I mean? We're taking their word for it. And again, I'm not with, I'm not but on the side of here. Don't forget, don't forget the lead up to that was them being on fucking Time Magazine and all of these things. It was a worldwide phenomenon that there were ghosts happening here. It wasn't just like there was a small thing. They were on the Atlanta for Christ's sake. Larry like, King was talking Larry about Larry King them. interviewed But he was with, saying that, the, you know, Larry Atlantic. King was saying that, you know, still people are saying that, that. He was saying what we're talking about, right? He's like, a lot of people are saying, though, they're the cause of it all. And so all you're only the eyewitnesses sure. to the event on the thing where we, I come down and I'm like, Mysterious guys, shit. I saved the universe. I saved the universe. You know what I mean? Like, what yeah. happened up there? Like, and every, this, yeah. yeah. My thing In every is like, action movie where there's a news truck standing outside of the catastrophe, none of that here. New York just doesn't care about that. Like, we have yeah. New York no news trucks, 80s, no reporters. Well, we definitely had that at the end no, of the No, the there is. There was reporters down oh, there. Oh, there was? With so, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. reporters down there. Like, like you guys, here's the thing. If they would have been, like, in California... That in the 80s, that might have made sense, right? Because the states were so disconnected, we didn't have the internet. You would have seen a news report, but that maybe, maybe you wouldn't have seen too much. And I could see five years later the general consensus of the, of the country being like, we totally forgot about that, or wait, that was a hoax, or to Kevin's point, conspiracy theorists take over and they're like, it was the government doing this, that, or the other thing, right? Mm-hmm. But the fact that when we, when I was a kid watching this movie, that these scenes pop up where someone goes, go, the judge is like, ghosts aren't real. The plain fact of the matter is it just feels weird. It feels off and it doesn't make sense in the, in the overall space. Now, they try to have the other guy politicize it, and that makes more sense. But even that guy that was supposed to be playing the William Atherton character, I forget. Oh, it's um, – what's his name from Psych? Um, 
Frick, I can't oh, remember his name. Yeah, he's, he's, he plays Woody no, no, inside. We're gonna, right. we're gonna call him Woody uh, from Kurt now on. Fuller. Kurt, Kurt Fuller. Kurt Fuller, Fuller, who plays, we all know, of course, from all the seasons of Psych, where he plays the, uh, the, the lead mortician, or the guy that works in the morgue, rather. Uh, but he's just like, I don't believe in this stuff either. These guys are crazy. And you're like, are you... Like, he needed to make it more, like, about political power and how he was throwing them aside so he could sure. step in or whatever. But it generally comes off like he thinks they're nutballs, and that's why he puts them in an insane asylum so that he can help the mayor get reelected and not necessarily worry about, like, them as an issue of, like, the, you know, him, the mayor being surrounded by all these, these, uh, these, these kooky characters. Well, he characters. definitely doesn't think they're crazy. He just wants them out of the mayor's hair. Yes, but I don't – like, he doesn't – it doesn't register to me like – it, it registers to me like he doesn't believe in ghosts, and that seems silly to me. Like, dude, if they don't get Kurt silly. Fuller to play Steve Ballmer in a movie, <laughs> that is a uh, you gotta do that. He's whoever's so making older. that movie, I understand. I, I understand what we're arguing, and it's fun just to argue about it. I do wish it was a bit. I think again for Afterlife, just the trailers, I think establish it better than this entire movie, right? Of like they were bigger than The Walking Dead, but then there hasn't been a ghost since. Okay, cool. If that makes cool. sense. Then I can Done. understand it. I like that. Yeah, that makes sense for me too. Tim, also, what do you I think of this movie? Like the logo. <laughs> I was I was gonna say there's two things that are the self-aware that break the world for me. One is that song, and two is the fact that they put the logo on their on their outfits, which makes no sense at all. But it's their second I, iteration. I, They're back. See, I read it as the just putting a peace sign on there. Right? <laughs> we'll go with that from now on. Tim, what did you think of Ghostbusters too? I also didn't like the logo on the the uniforms. I thought that was too much. But um, I was surprised at how much I enjoyed this movie overall because I thought it was going to be a trash fire. Everything I heard about this for years is I've never seen it, and everything I've ever heard was like, "Oh man, they just made it for kids and all that stuff." And I, I see elements of that, but like not to the near the degree that I expected. It's like, okay, cool, they're not smoking in this one as much. It kind of seems kind of like it. Uh, and I thought there was going to be way more like fun ghosts like to sell toys and shit. And I'm like, there was oh. still a lot of severed heads. <laughs> uh, yeah. Some really downright scary moments in this shit. I definitely think that the first movie is better overall. It is like a better film. Um, and it, it, the, the first one works so much because like we all talked about last week, it's so special and like unique for this new IP to be so well developed and not quite fit into any one genre. And I think this one definitely is a comedy straight up uh, with elements of horror and elements of sci-fi and elements of kind of like more action -y stuff. Um, and I agree with Andy that it definitely gets worse as it goes on. Like by the time the Statue of Liberty stuff hits, it's like, what is even happening? And I don't like this. Like that it's a bad well, call. And it feels like the movie doesn't really have a climax the moment, song, which, is the, which is a great song. That's just like, great. you know what the other, the other travesty is too, is that they have this bad guy who is this generic kind of like Eastern European kind of bad guy character. Yeah, and for sure some reason, go. What's that? Yano Shervigo. Who First off, about? we will not speak badly about Yano. Just Yanush making sure he doesn't do it. He, he's possessing us his will. He's, you know, Yanush Come on is to the heart of this film. No. Um, uh, <laughs> 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 oh, but I would. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, You're um, cutting out. Your voice is too high pitched when you do that. It, Your mic doesn't pick it up. <laughs> but uh, no, oh, but I would. Uh, Vigo is this actor is just so weird and not menacing. And then you realize they dubbed his voiceover with Max von Sydow. And you're like, why didn't you just get him? He would have been such a better villain for this movie. He was like, I don't know. Who way was more Max imposing van, van Sydow? They already um, had the painting, Nick. Max the von old Sydow. man from the beginning of Force Awakens. Yes. Like, Who are that's... you? The guy was like, this will, go, this will start to make things right. Uh, he, was, uh, he was in Judge Dredd. You, if, I, if you Google the I'm picture gonna Google of YouTube. It, yeah. I got it. Hold on. Hold on, hold on. Max yeah. Vaughn. And they didn't tell the, the actor in the movie okay. that this was going to happen. So when yeah, he was right at the now. premiere, he walked out. He was oh, in that shit. Ingmar Bergman film uh, where he plays chess versus death. Hmm. Yeah. What a he, sad realization. A he's awesome. And it's so weird that they were like, well, this guy, we don't like his voice, so we'll get this guy. Well, why don't you just get this guy to begin with? He's yeah. doing way better. He's Vigo a, just feels like this me. generic, bad, not good, fun villain. Also, one of those, I didn't bring this up last time, but uh, Paula took me on a tour of ILM, and I got to see the, like, Slimer animatronic. And uh, they had the, like, full-size Vigo, like, painting that they used in the movie. And Still, it's amazing. Did you smell so the Slimer? Cool. Did it smell like onions? No, it's in a big glass thing. Okay. Uh, it's just the robotic parts. The top part all like got gross. Oh, that just is okay. That yeah. felt yeah. for sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It was really cool though. So I love the the setup of this movie. I love the premise of it being five years later and where they set everybody getting the team back together is always something I'm interested in. And I think that they did a good job with this one. Like, I don't really agree that this is the same movie as the first one. Like, there's some elements that you can compare, but I feel like you can do that with 
any movie that is a sequel. Uh, but I think with this, it like did a good job of kind of building the in between world for me, where like I can fill in the gaps on like what these characters have done in between and uh, seeing them in their different combinations. I like how much more of the dudes themselves we got in this one, like just hanging out and talking. And mm -hmm. it sure. was a lot more like quippy, but like the quips worked for me and like, it felt like they were more comfortable with each other. And like, I buy that with the the time jump. Um, and I, I was a little interested that they brought back Dana's character. That didn't really work for me at all. Like it felt convenient. A lot of things feel convenient in this. Um, but I think that overall it's like, I do enjoy this movie more than I enjoy the first one. I just think the first one is like definitely a better movie. I, I I'll second that too. Like I like my, one of my favorite scenes was a couple of my favorite scenes in the movie. And by the way, I feels like I'm uh, being very negative on this. I enjoy watching this movie. It's just, it's not as good. It's, it's just sad to me because it's a huge missed opportunity in our, in, in our youth. And it could have been something, I don't know. Back in the '80s, the sequ sequels were always something you sort of dreaded. You were like, "Oh, they're they're, they're going to screw this up." And this one. But here's my thing: is you think it could have been? I I honestly, and I know that's such a stupid thing. Unlimited possibility, unlimited budget. Obviously, a million things could have been amazing. But like following up Ghostbusters, like I feel like Ghostbusters was lightning in a bottle in so many different ways. And I think back yes. again what we talked about last time, right? Or I talked about of like it being this bridge between a more modern comedy and then what the more se late '70s comedies were that were kind of rambling, like there's a reason you know blues brothers 2000 sucks now you know what i mean like it's just like why do that again because like it was we've moved from a different place to a different thing like i think i mean i'm a, i can't wait to see afterlife but i think even then we've had two ghostbuster films that people and I, I i agree don't live up to the original right so like the expectations are different coming off this movie that was a juggernaut that launched this logo and this ip and this brand and made these people such huge movie stars like i'm not saying it's impossible obviously to do a movie a sequel to a a great film but like i don't know what you would have well, done with ghostbusters that wouldn't have felt like you're kind of redoing the same thing so to, to, you mean you would have continued the storyline to some degree so the other two examples that i would point out and obviously these are going to be like very highfalutin examples but uh you want empire strikes back which is a nice follow-up which just takes the story in a completely different direction uh and then you have the back to the future franchise which again back to the future 2 not nearly as good as the first one but still tonally kind of feels like it belongs in this universe and continues the story in an interesting way um and i would actually say that back to the future 3 is actually a pretty good movie too and they just they just do different things with it but this one feels like I like the beginning of this, and I forget who said it earlier. I think it was uh, Andy or Tim that was talking about, like, the, the, it starts off great, and then toward the end, you just kind of lose interest in it. But I like the beginning. I like where we find them. I like that they're down on their luck, and I, I like that the Ghostbusters is no more. But they needed to come back with, first off, why is any of this happening? It doesn't necessarily, like, because they got this f painting? Like, what, what like, the, the whole concept of... The Dead Rising was because Vigo was making its way back, or not Vigo, excuse me, Gozer. Gozer was coming back, and and it was sort of a self fulfilling prophecy because they were capturing all these ghosts. But the big thing that like made it all erupt and, and let the big baddie come was that they put them all in one place, and it exploded. Right? Correct me if I'm wrong. I could be wrong on this. Yeah. But I thought this, it was equally weak in the first one, though. Like that, all that explanation felt kind of like here's the reasoning for why this is happening, but it doesn't actually add up or make sense. And this one, I agree, it's the same thing. It's like they're just doing this it again. One's a painting. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a painting that they have for no reason that just starts to come to life for some. I mean, when sure. he goes there, it's you know to, to yeah. take over, right? Like, I, don't um, get me wrong, I'm with you. Like, I think on both fronts, like you, even us right now, where we're like, oh man, like you know, for this five year gap of the Ghostbusters being out of business, right? Or it, you know, whatever's happened to them, it is that thing of like, well, were there zero ghosts? You know, what I mean? like like yeah. I understand obviously that yes, things were getting according to or, you know Winston, which we believe, right? Things were getting more and more animated because it was preparing for the coming of Gozer. Ghosts were really getting ratcheted up. So, yeah, after that, was it just all quiet on the Western Front? Did the Ghostbusters kind of also go out of business because there was no one yeah. there? And then, yeah, if so, just, the river of slime we have here, all the negative energy, and yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, so wait, had that, is that what? because Vigo's there like you know yeah, what i mean like when you get down to that almost, level of right? it you're like wait what's happening yeah so i, I mean again that, these are all the MacGuffins, right these are all the things that kind of get them the movies going so you start to start peeling back the layers too much on any movie like that and you're going to have a lot of these questions i just thought they could have come up with a more inspired place for them to be in a second and third act again i love the, the things i like about this movie the things i look forward to are the beginning i love when he comes into to raise a cult like ray's just got this occult bookshop and they're just it's like the hang that's where they go and pete's not out of their life He's still hanging out and comes in and screws with him every once in a while. I was like, let's go get a drink. Let's go. And, and obviously, I love – I'm a sucker for the world of psychic, or the psychics, whatever uh, Pete's show is yeah. called. I like all that stuff. I like where he's like that until, ne until next week. 
<laughs> okay. <laughs> so all that stuff like works for me. It's just by the time we actually get into the meat and bones of the movie, you're just like, what? And, and to Andy's point, like Dana coming back in, you're like, ah. And it's like, you know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of Die Hard 2, where for some reason, uh, uh, John McClane's wife was on the plane. And you're like, why do they keep, why does this keep happening? But at least at the end of that movie, uh, uh, Bonnie, or, uh, what's her name? Uh, Bonnie Bedelia, the actor's name goes, why does this keep happening to me? Like, why does this keep happening to us? And in this one, I'd be like, I'd be like, I'm getting the hell away from these people. It's it's too hour, it's too coincidental. That, yeah, that's the thing with Dana, right there. There's one line uh, when she's either rushing over there, or when she first get, or when she gets to the museum and they have Oscar, and like, and, and it's a, I'm not gonna let them do this to you, or you know, what I mean, I want them to take you, or something like that. And it's like just a throwaway line of like as something a mother would say to her child, but it's like, man, I would have loved to have seen them deconstruct that a bit. Mm-hmm. I'm not going to let them do to you what was done to me. You won't be possessed and have sex with <laughs> Rick Moranis. With and be like, Kelly, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, or like, I, my, this is a fucked Weird up thing, thing that did something. Baby. But there's never even an acknowledgement from her, really, right? Of gatekeeper, key master, yeah. all that jazz. Like that, I've been through this hell too. Um, but I will say, like, I like, I like all the beginning stuff. I like all the setup for this. Um, and I love. I know it's ridiculous, and it goes on way too long. But there are some great, some of the greatest moments in Ghostbusters in general is in the courtroom scene with Rick Moranis, where he's just like. And when you love a place, you try to defend. <laughs> Nobody's like this. He's like, it's so uh, "Do you have any other questions?" He's like, "Do I?" He goes, "No, we've helped, helped them enough." enough. Yeah, <laughs> all that stuff's great. I love that uh, Harold is Harold great Amber's job. Slightly short goes, but pointless. Short, but pointless. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, sorry. Not to lament too negatively on the movie. I do have. Well, I mean, it's not. Uh, yeah, it's not a lo- negative lament, and I think that's the interesting thing. Uh, you know, is obviously I love Ghostbusters too. No shit, right? But it's like that thing of the go. You know, when we talk about Ghostbusters one, it is very much like, oh, we're do- we're doing Ghostbusters in review, right? Ghostbusters one in review. You could have again on a random Tuesday been like, we're doing it right now, Greg, and I would have fucking gone and nailed it, right? Whereas Ghost, yeah, that's because not only have I watched Ghostbusters a million times as a child, as an adult, I've watched Ghostbusters a million times. And I think then you get to Ghostbusters 2, right? Where in 89, right, I am prime for this movie as a right, child. And I am in there with mom and we watch it. And I, I, you know, we, I remember going to Blockbuster to get the tape and like calling all the time. And then, you know, owning your own copy and watching it over and over as a kid. But as an adult, how many times have I gone and watched Ghostbusters 2? You know what I mean? And it's like, it's a rare one to toss on. If it's on TV, I'll stop and watch a bit of it. And I've clearly, I mean, I've watched it as an adult, but it's like not to the way I've watched Ghostbusters 1, not to the way like I was talking last week of every time I watch it following somebody's diff- somebody else's performance throughout, right? Because Ghostbusters 2 is a fine movie. It is a fun movie. It is more It is more of the Ghostbusters doing Ghostbusters-y things, right? But the effects don't, I don't think, work as well as they did in the first one. Like, I, and I, we even talk about like the, First one having the weird like moving frames and stuff of matte paintings, right? Whereas this one, it's more like just like, okay, cool. Clearly there's like a machine lifting the courtroom table. That's just like a weird motion of how that's going up. And I know this is even over analyzing Ghostbusters 2 more than most, but it's like Ghostbusters 2 is a fun one built around slime. Yeah. Kids love slime, right? Yep. Put it in there. Kids Let's love Janine with slime. red hair. Put well, it in there. People love a uh, slime, right? Put them in there. To, to, to get by to answer your original question, Greg, w- could this have been a good movie? Yes, I do think it was, but not five years later when the gang got back together to basically just cash a paycheck. And that's kind of what this feels like. Sure. It kind of feels like, hey, fine. Like we Bill Murray, I know Bill Murray was the holdout, right? And because he didn't want to go down this again because he knew exactly what this movie was going to become, which was this. And that that is what it became. Had they all got together and been like, hey, we really love this movie. Let's try and find a unique way to continue this two years later maybe it would have had a shot but five years later when they're all conservatively 20 to 25 pounds overweight where they used to be and losing their hair i think this just becomes this becomes like kind of a a parody of what the other one was and that's an interesting push and pull of the film as well i think right where i'm sure we all remember when there was the ghostbusters 2 oprah episode uh of course aunt Dell tried to get me in desperately at the time uh, oprah wouldn't let children in so i wasn't allowed to come very upset then when she did the teenage mutant ninja turtles episode and it was filled with kids but i digress um what a in the episode, uh, which is this great interview, you know what I mean? And I think is, you know, it's, you know, it's PR or whatever, but there's a lot of interesting tidbits in there. But one of them was, you know, I believe it was Dan Aykroyd, but maybe it was Harold Ramis, right? Talking about like, you know, it's five years later and we've all grown up a lot, right? Mm-hmm. And he's like, that's the reason nobody smokes in this film. Granted, Dan Aykroyd is a cigar, but not like it. everybody's smoking like a chimney, right? Smoking grits left and right. And it is this thing, I think, where 
they knew that they had an, a child audience now. I think so many of them had kids that had grown up. And you mm-hmm. already mentioned it, right? Like Ivan Reitman's son, Jason Reitman, director of Ghostbusters Afterlife, is the kid who's like, my dad says you're full of crap, right? Like they knew what a movement was and they oh, knew wh- who was actually watching this and listening to this. And I think that led to a interesting push and pull of making a movie. Yeah, like it has a bunch of severed heads, but the guy's reactions to those severed heads, I think, are so c- cartoony, right? Like the the ghost train rolling through Winston and him, oh, like, you know what I mean? Like there's so many things Winston that sucks. Can we just say it, though? Both I, movies. Ernie Hudson is what? Both movies. I love Winston in number one. Winston uh, in number two, I think, is just a caricature of. Yeah, I just didn't ever do anything good with him. Yeah, I feel like he's done such a disservice in both movies where it's just like, give him something to do in the first one. And in this one, give him something better to do. Uh, He saves the guys with the fire extinguisher, remember? But that's what he does. Sorry, by the way, I didn't mean to to, to throw some body shaming at the guys. Obviously, if you're going to gain a little weight, gain a little weight. I think what I meant with that. It's a line in the movie, sucking the guts guys with the Ghostbusters. No, they're they're well aware of where they're placed in this movie. Right. And I also think it's. Sorry, go ahead. Sorry, let me just clarify before we go on. What I meant was that they're no longer hungry, right? These guys are mega stars now, and coming back sure. five years later, inevitably is going. You're going to get a different movie. You're going to get a different chemistry and a different group of guys, as opposed to the original Ghostbusters that made Bill Murray a superstar. Yeah. See, with and that I, stuff, though, I, I like going back to like my thoughts on this real quick. Like, I the first bit of the movie worked so well for me because the five year later jump and like filling in the gaps there of them being these superstars after the first movie and like kind of commercializing it and selling the fuck out. Like, that's kind of what I read. And that's why them having the theme song and the kids, like the parents thinking the kids are going to enjoy this at the party and all that. Like, it all worked for me where it's like, I believe in this world that people are now questioning if the ghosts ever happen and all this, because they're so commercialized, there's such celebrities that it's like, that's not fucking real. These celebrities are just profiting off of this shit. And you know, that that's turning into an issue. There are people that are like, no, I was there. It was real. Or look at the footage. Right. What do you fucking think? And they'll come up with whatever excuse it is of just like, yeah, well th- that's all PR for them to do this, like to be famous or whatever. And then uh, for the kids to turn on them, for everyone to start turning on them. And like that being the plot of the beginning of this movie and them not being together, ghosts are coming back. They have to come back together. I thought all that was so interesting being five years later, seeing that Bill Murray is now hosting a, a show so many of what they were doing made sense and added up but then it's like once they're back together i thought them going down like the whole scene of them dealing with the cops with bill murray is like doing the go get mike thing of just like pretending to be a construction worker i fucking love all of that so okay, damn good. Much. i thought you're you gonna break my heart I thought you on that Ziggy, oh, what no, did no, i tell no, you up. phone lines are over there what did i tell you that entire scene both iterations no. of it of like as they're they're first doing the jackhammer and then when the cops pull up and like mm-hmm. uh raise down there honestly that 10 minutes is my favorite of anything we've seen so far of the ghostbusters i think it's so fucking funny it they're so great characters the dynamic is just 10 out of 10 it's awesome and they don't need to be doing ghost busting shit for that to be awesome it's just they're great as these ghostbuster characters but then once they really become after that scene and the statue of liberty and all that stuff all the, everything I said kind of falls apart and it's not about that anymore. And then they're just, that's where I feel like they're back where they were in the first one, where the crowds are all like weirdly dancing and like circumcision to cheer them on and stuff. And I'm like, God damn, this all fell apart. But you, I you really you thought like, they set it up great. You know, like the montage where it goes, bam, 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 but it's like a redo of the song and it's so generically bad while it's happening. Dude, I mean, the music. I, I thought the first one let me down where it's like, why do they like edit the song? Let the song just fucking be what uh, it is. It's such an uh, awesome song hard. that hits so hard. And they take out all the hit. Ugh. Greg, keep, keep going, please. Oh, I mean, I mean, I, I think we're, we've all said it, right? I think we've been around the block on this one of what it is. I think, you know, it's a movie that, you know, is entrenched in my childhood, right? Of course, like, because it is that thing of the payoff to what I wanted as a kid. I wanted more Ghostbusters. And I think it's one of those weird ones that, like, you don't get me wrong, like, you, we see people wrestle with it all, all the time in movies, but it's such a weird product of that late 80s, early 90s of, like, it's five years later, no one can be happy. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Dana's divorced, and it's not Peter's kid, and it's all this stuff, and it's like... Yeah, Dana's relationship is so... Dana's character is so weird in this, because yeah. that was the other thing that was kind of weird. I was like, wait a minute, this woman is a concert, like, cellist, which is an incredibly tough thing to do and takes all of your time and effort, but she's also an 
a, a professional art restor like restorer that's incredibly tough to do and would take all of your effort all the time. Yeah, I'm like, give her I'll some shellac and she just gets rid of it or whatever. <laughs> yeah, yeah, working on these things. I was like, this seems like a very specialized thing, like something that you would spend your entire life trying to master as an artist to try to, re to restore these things. Maybe I'm wrong. She has, I think she has one line where she's like, she she majored or double majored in college or something like that. But I was just like, why? It's so weird that they plugged her into this museum. It doesn't make any sense to very forced in there yeah yeah she's <laughs> like well now we that had i have Janos, we had to get vigo we had to know it was a cameo yeah. that was it and so again. that's the thing right yeah yeah and i mean yeah of course or but she again, should have been a character you know, in the working like working with them or just pizza i don't know she could have been any, any number of things but i mean they were like yeah we got to get sigourney weaver back and why not i mean this is the thing about it where like again like i disagree with him where i think this movie is far too similar to ghostbusters one and to go a step further then right ghostbusters the video game is far too similar to ghostbusters one and two like it's like ghostbusters has this thing of i think harold ramus and dan Aykroyd, like of trying to do fan service for something that they built not expecting it to have this kind of fandom right which is incredibly tough because ghostbusters 2 for me is hey fuck yeah i'm a kid hey fuck yeah it's more ghostbusters it's a new kind of proton pack that shoots slime it's a new logo and a new costume and a new thing and yeah, a new car like but it's the same car it's all new but same like you know what it is and yeah, then ghostbusters but... the video game is hey we're finally giving you the third movie and so vankman is chasing Alyssa milano and you're gonna go to the cedric hotel and you're gonna go to the library and you're gonna fight the stay puff marshmallow man and it's all about uh gozer again it is all about eve evo shandor and now you look at ghostbusters afterlife and they're like it's all about evo shander like, it's right. almost to the point where like this what should we have them fight you're like how about a giant star of death should we do a death star now we've already done that three times but four times the charm all right yeah you're right fuck it let's get him another death star i dig so, so yeah before we move on, on planets let me tell you about our sponsors. This episode is brought to you by Me Undies. Are you ready for mashed potato season, aka turkey with gravy and cranberry sauce season, aka every kind of pie and more season? Well, Me Undies is here with the softest and stretchiest undies in the game, so you can be ready for seconds and thirds, baby. I love Me Undies. I have for a very long time, even right now. Of course, I'm wearing my lounge pants, the undies themselves, and the socks. I love having that soft micromodal fabric all over my body. They have undies and loungewear made out of soft, breathable, stretchy fabrics that are perfect for everything from pre-dinner activities to post-dinner naps. Uh, Me Undies also has a great deal for you guys. Uh, for any first-time purchasers, you can get 15% off and free shipping. Me Undies also has a promise. If you're not satisfied with any product for any reason you can return your order for a full refund within 45 days to get 15 percent off your first order free shipping and 100 percent satisfaction guarantee go to meundies.com slash morning that's meundies.com slash morning and next up shout out to trade are you the kind of person who falls asleep already thinking about the next morning's coffee well Trade's goal is to make every cup of coffee your best ever. The journey to your perfect cup starts with taking their coffee quiz. You use a French press, automatic drip, you're a cold brew person, no problem. Trade will match you to coffees you'll love from 400 plus craft coffees and will send you a freshly roasted bag as often as you'd like. Trade guarantees you'll love your first match. On the off chance that you don't though, they'll replace it with a different bag for free. Me and Cool Gray had a lot of fun going through the quiz, trying to find him his perfect coffee and he has been having a great time with Trade. Uh, for you guys out there right now, Trade is offering your first bag free and $5 off your bundle at checkout. To get yours, just go to drinktrade.com slash kind of funny and use promo code kind of funny take the quiz to start your journey to the perfect cup that's drinktrade.com slash kind of funny promo code kind of funny for your first bag free and five dollars off of your bundle that's d-r-i-n-k-t-r-a-d-e dot com slash kind of funny and next up shout out to uncommon goods if you're on a mission to be the best gift giver ever this season it's never too early to start looking no matter who you're shopping for uncommon goods is the place to find remarkable and truly original gifts for anyone me and gia actually recently just did a puzzle that we got from them that was a lot of fun just for some like bonding date night time and there's actually a bunch of really cool date night options there uh there was one thing that i was looking at that is a date night painting where you get this uh you get the package and you actually get a 90 minute 
uh, session with an instructor. You guys get to paint together. It's a whole thing. It sounds like a blast. Uncommon Goods looks for products that are high quality, unique, and often handmade. They have the most meaningful, out of the ordinary gifts anywhere. And with every purchase you make, Uncommon Goods gives $1 back to a nonprofit partner of your choice. That's awesome. To get 15% off your next gift, go to uncommongoods.com slash kind of funny. That's uncommongoods.com slash kind of funny for 15% off. Don't miss out on this limited time offer. Uncommongoods.com slash kind of funny. Let's get to the plot. He's gonna be a dad when that baby comes loose. What is his name? Greg Miller. He's gonna say the plot. He'll drink recap juice. What is his name? Greg Miller. We're gonna let Tim host. Whenever we get to that part, because I know in my head, I'm like, the line I have to come in after is something about Tim. But we yeah. get to that thing where he goes, and I'm like, oh, shit, did I fuck it up? Uh, welcome, everybody, to Ghostbusters 2. The year is 1989. Greg Miller is six years old. Uh, we find the Ghostbusters five years later. And if you want to if you want to vent right now, Tim, go for it, because I know this must have really hurt your feelings to find out that Avengers just ripped this movie off. You know what I mean? Five oh, years yeah. later, right oh, on screen. Honestly, just Started off with that, I was like, oh shit, that's that's pretty fucking hype. Let's yeah, go. of course. Establishing you're in the universe and what happens immediately, we get some uh, sidewalk, we get some pink slime coming out of it, and a baby carriage roll throughs, and it just so happens to be the one, the only, the Dana Barrett. Dana Barrett is rolling her baby, and you think, oh man, maybe this is, you know, Pete Vankman's baby. Maybe everything turned out all right in their lives. Spoilers, it it's did Lewis not. Kelly's baby, we don't know. Jesus don't know. Christ, Nick. <laughs> I mean, yeah, yeah, I guess. <laughs> uh, just maybe not through the actual other ones. Incubated uh, for five years, then popped out. It's like goes the goes there and good evening. Uh, she runs into, of course, the uh, maintenance guy. What do you call that? The super uh, of her apartment building complains about some stuff. He's like, I'm not, I'm not. The, you know, she asked him to help bring up some. I'm not the doorman, Miss Barrett. Uh, and while she's like, y- yanking his chain, he's a human stuff, being. <laughs> exactly right. Yeah, exactly. But New York, this is the setup of New York sucks. Everybody there assholes. sucks. And everybody's angry, right? Uh, while she's keeps uh, talking about some stuff wrong in her uh, apartment, the baby carriage starts to roll. She's like, that's awkward. I put on the brake. And then she runs over there and the baby carriage takes off and it's, it's shooting around. Boom, jing, it's going all over the place. It goes into the street. Of course, the driver coming head coming head on at a baby carriage. His first reaction is to slam on the brakes and hit the horn, as if the baby carriage can fucking stop you, asshole. It gets around him. It goes around some guys with a carpet. Drop it. Oh, somebody something. Something baby. All hell's breaking loose. The driver right, doesn't know that there's a uh, that there's not like a three and a half foot person on the other side of that pushing it. You know. Uh, and just as it's about to get hit by a bus it stops dana runs up scoops up the baby that will become little oscar that we will soon know is little oscar and the fucking music starts right and i know i've talked about this before but if you'll give me a moment once more this is one of those moments i remember sitting there popcorn in my lap i'm watching this movie stratford square mall bloomingdale illinois big old jamie kennedy next to me in the middle of a day or whatever and i remember at the time, you know, my mom, when it started, the, the, she picks up uh, Oscar, Dana, the music starts, you start to see the No Ghost logo form. I remember my mom stop, turning and looking at me and I knew she was watching me and I knew she was watching for my reaction. And I remember being like, I'm so cool. I'm so I'm such a grown up kid. You know what I mean? I'm not going to. And as that fucking music swelled, the logo formed. It was the no ghost logo. I fucking had the biggest shit eating grin on my face. Like I could not fight it. And it's one of those weird, I feel like bridge moments between being a kid in like whatever not thinking about things and then being not an adult by any stress of imagination but understanding what my mom was looking for in that moment yeah, me yeah. not wanting but then the kid version of me not being able to not deliver not it let alone it. now yeah, on you I know the, a month to go to my child's birth right to think about like the things and watching him be excited or sharing things with him i mean goddamn what a fucking moment for little Greggy, though, to see Ghostbusters uh, 2 so here cool. in theaters. Uh, and from there, yeah, Ghostbusters. Wah, 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 wah. And then it's, you know, the Ecto-1 roaring into the screen and looking like shit. It's filthy. It's ble- it's burping out smoke. Uh, the car rolls up. Uh, Ray and Winston climb out. 
they come into a house and like how many of them are there oh you know this many how big are they how about this tall they look at each other and they come in and it's not ghosts everybody it's children it's children there it's a birthday party hey kids who wants to have fun <laughs> the kids the one kid oh, i thought it was gonna be he man uh, an even more dated reference than the ghostbusters but i digress i wish uh, they kind of played that up a bit more of them about to go in there when yeah, the like lady says a line. They're about four sure, feet sure. tall. Like, I wish there was a little more of that because it just kind of ended really abruptly and immediately there at a kid's party. And it was like, oh, that was cute, but could have been a little cuter. Could have been a little cuter. Nicholas? I want to give a shout out to Mary Ellen Trainer here as well, who mm-hmm. is in every freaking movie in the 80s. She was, she was the, of course, the, the therapist in Lethal Weapon. She was the mom in Goonies. Uh, I think she might have been in Scrooge. I don't even know. She's been in a bunch of stuff. Um, and she's awesome uh you know ray and winston are setting up and then the boy that we already talked about who is in court is of course jason reitman the director of ghostbusters afterlife comes over and says you know my dad says you're full of crap and ray's like well a lot of people have trouble <laughs> believing in the paranormal no no my dad just says you're full of crap uh he has winston hit the music they start dancing to the ghostbusters song the kids say he man instead of ghostbusters they pretty much immediately stop and are like all right cool let's go get a beer yeah. <laughs> and then it's them leaving with money getting paid for their appearance well, uh, i mean at this point camp. greg you're it's like you, you you get bigfoot to come to the party you immediately know this is a terrible idea this is a callback to one of the shows <laughs> yeah, 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 like, I know yeah perfect. uh and uh you know it's a bad idea what do you do you cut your losses you got to pay the person they, it's not their fault they showed you up think that was you a paid professional He-Man. the bigfoot you don't think one that was- the Bigfoot. Oh yeah, yeah that cost- paying that person. That pay that person got hundred bucks at least. I mean that 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 costume looks very similar to our uh, orangutan outfit that we have. No, you our orangutan know. did not look nearly that good. Those well, like our orangutan outfit smells orangutan like stale right. Bud Light from. That is no one <laughs> talked about the smell, I, Nick. I'm sure that that or the Bigfoot smelled terrible. We too. don't know. We don't know what it smells like. I'm positive. Know. Ray and Winston leave. They have their money. Ray has his hat. You know, Ray was Winston's like, you know, I'm over this. We got to stop. And he's like, what do you mean? The holidays are coming up. They're our biggest season. He's like, face it, Ray. Ghost busting is dead, right? He's like, after, and then uh, Ray's like, uh, uh, ungrateful little yuppie larva after everything we did for this city. And Winston's like, yeah, we conjured up a hundred foot marshmallow, man. Blew the top three floors off of downtown high rise. Got sued by, or ended up getting sued by every state, uh, county, and city agency in New York. And then Ray has the great line that i think is i think of with me and nick all the time but what a ride i know i love it um and that's the end of them the, the ghost busting's over they're gonna you know winston doesn't want to do this anymore uh from there we go checking on egon who's at another university i don't think it's columbia i forget if they tell us which one it is uh, uh dana is coming to talk to him about the baby carriage incident uh egon is running experiments to see if you know it's actually in reverse what he was checking but he wants to know if uh, human emotions can affect uh, physical space but he keeps fucking with physical space to fuck with the human emotions and so he's got a, a couple in there for marriage counseling in a room he's been steadily increasing the heat and yeah nick it's funny because I always thought, like going back and watching this the last couple of times, I was like, what a missed opportunity. I always thought this this should have played into like his other stuff, which I guess it did because he does the research for the slime and kind of figures out that it's the anger that's going into it. But I was just Emotion, like, oh, yeah. you know, I, I always just thought, I, I guess this is kind of a setup for it now that I'm thinking about it. My bad. Never mind. It's not as on the nose as you think it would be, though. Well, I you always thought I mean? there was going to be a callback to it and they have to go back to the lab to get some stuff. I thought that would have sure. been kind of cool. I thought it was uh, so yeah. Yeah, <laughs> there's the room in there. There get, it's getting hotter. The assistant comes in to ask him, uh, you know, to wait. What is it? A half an hour or another longer or whatever. Hour, yeah. yeah, another half hour. Egon's got his little yeah. device or whatever. Is they all freak the out about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then then he goes to the next Let's one. Right. Take away the puppies. What now? Kevin? Let's see what happens when we take away the puppies. That's it. <laughs> well, yeah, you're a little bit early on this, but yeah, there's still more to talk about in the scene before we get to the punchline. Uh, yeah, in the scene over. Yeah, they're uh, doing this. Uh, the puppy thing with the little girl. Uh, little know, girl. Who is it? Is this, uh, is sister. This... Oh, okay. I didn't know that. Is Egon's daughter in this later on? I don't All right, know. thanks. Great um, question, Greg. <laughs> um, so, uh, blah, 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 you mean Hell Graham is his real daughter? What? You said is Egon's daughter in this later yes, on? Yes, Egon in the movie does not have a daughter. Yes, I'm talking about Harold Ramis' daughter, who yeah, was yeah, my yeah, father, the Ghostbuster. I can't remember if she has an appearance in this movie. Uh, by the way, while we're here and we're talking about uh, Ivan Reitman's daughter, I forget her name. Tim, do you have that? You said it was Catherine. Catherine, her show, uh, ba- what is it, Working Moms on Netflix? Very fun. You should watch that. Um, however, though, uh, there's still more stuff happening here we like in this scene. Uh, oh, it's the great thing where they're catching up a little bit about what's going on, right? And Dana lays it all out, right? Of like, do you still see Peter? Uh, every once in a while. And then the great line, too, of like, how is he? 
Well, he was borderline. Then he crossed the border. Another great line. Uh, but then, it, does he ever ask about me? <laughs> and Egon has a moment where he turns there and he goes, "No." But then he has the thing ready to get the negative emotion off of her, yeah, which I like funny. a lot. Uh, yeah, you know. So, anyways, don't mention this to Peter. Help me out with the thing. Uh, Ivan Reitman's daughter's in there. They get the puppy. They do the thing. Uh, Dana leaves. She kisses Egon. Egon has a weird reaction to it that I never liked, even uh, as a child. Where he gets horribly bashful and smiles. It's very yeah. Weird. I don't know. Is that bashful? Uh, anyways, though, then it, let's see what happens when we take away that. Oh, this is a, but it's a perfect example. To me, like Egon just seemed so like he didn't really understand human emotions in the first one, and to have him have this like sort of really heartwarming reaction to this just to me always just seemed off. I was like, I don't. I, I just don't. It just feels a lot of his stuff here is very out of character. Uh, from here, we jump to World of the Psychic with Dr. Peter Venkman. Uh, another a, a great, a, you know, I, I, we talk about the disconnection or whatever, the five years of the, the, how these characters are. I do appreciate, you know, jumping from Dana being like, you know, you're more like a game show host to jumping here to see Pete, you know, you know just phoning it in on a local New York TV, you assume, for this shitty psychic show that he has, right? Where today he's talking about the end of the world. He has two different people. Uh, the first guy says the world is going to end at the stroke of midnight this year. Uh, of course, another one great one here, I think, from Peter Bankman slash Bill Murray, the performance, right, of like, isn't that cutting a little close? Like, you won't even have paperback sales? Like, why not say three years, get the TV movie out of it? And the so guy's funny. like, so good. Really good. And the guy here, again, has a, the guy who, another is another one of those 80 character actors you see everywhere, Nick. I, I love him most, by the way, in Veep. He did a, he, did, he was in every season of Veep, and he's just, his character is so defeated the entire well, time. Well, he does a great one here where, like, when he, like, I, I, I love the ending of his conversation with Peter, right? Where he's like, I have a strong belief that the world, like, you know what I mean? Like, he truly yeah. believes this. This and he actually is right, right? He has the Vigo belief. That's what it's going to. But then he turns around to talk to this woman, Elaine, who is Kevin equally Dunn. fucking awesome in this scene, I think, or whatever, of just, uh, she told her husband, this alien at the holiday in Paramus, took her up to there and told her the world's going to end February uh, 14th, 2016, it goes, 2016, it was it? 2016, yeah. he goes, Valentine's Day. Oof. Bummer. 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 <laughs> great, another, a great one right to camera right and so then he cuts back he's like so elaine your your alien had a room at the holiday in paramus she's like i don't know i can't be sure pete it might have been a you know it might have been a, a room of the spaceship made up to look like the holiday in paramus uh and it, i you know i can't trust him whatever and that's when he jumps up out of his thing he's like that's the thing about aliens sometimes you meet a nice one star what is it star uh Whatever Star I want Man. to see, Star Lord, e. which is not right. ET, but the yeah. most time they're trying to be a big lizard. <laughs> next time, next week on World of the Cycle, hairless pets, weird, weird. <laughs> <laughs> that's all he's got on this shitty Which, show right amazing is somebody just perfectly hands him the dog right? it, what like, is it yeah, week, yeah the cat yeah, yeah. Pet, give me ira cat, right? give me like, ira flips it around weird, weird. <laughs> and so yeah and then it's uh you know, the joke we liked earlier right of, until next time <laughs> uh and then yeah he comes off stage he talks to his production manager he's like what happened to the guy who could bend the spoons he's like he and no notable no respectful no respectable psychic will come on because they think you're a fraud i am a fraud yeah. and at this point yeah the mayor's getting to it around the tv station right so pete and me is like lenny pete and he turns and looks at him and then uh yeah the new peck steps in who's like name is never really driven into our heads you know what i mean yeah weird yeah uh, it, it is really weird like just because he's there so much and has so many lines. It's like the thing like, you look over at Hardemeyer, Hardemeyer on the IMDb page. All right, I don't remember anybody ever saying his name, period. But whatever. Yeah, uh, We're going to call him New Peck the rest of the way. Uh, New Peck lays it all out, right? Of like, oh, hey, Dr. Bankman, I see you here, but I don't see any ghosts. Great performance by this guy. Just being a dick, too, by the way. You know what I mean? And he's a great dick in everything he's in. I'm telling you right uh, now. Oh, that's not true because, when he, again, in Psych, he's just a very, very oh, lovable oh, idiot. God. Just a okay. lovable idiot. All right, fine. It's psych. He's great, everybody. All right. He's he's great in psych, everybody, if you haven't seen it. Uh, so it lays it out, you know what I mean? Like, it, or Pete lays it out, right? Of like, you know, we got screwed by some bureaucratic bookworm like yourself. You know, you know, we did a job for the city, never got paid. I want to talk to the mayor, kiss him on the cheek. Uh, you know, he's not, you're not going to talk to him. He's running for, re or he's going to, he's, he got aspirations to run for governor. He can't be associated with you and your ghost busting friends or whatever. Uh, and then he takes off and uh, Vankman has a guy, you know, I'm a voter. <laughs> Aren't you supposed to lie to me and kiss my butt? Uh, from there, uh, we then go with the Ghostbusters to raise Book a call, shop. right? Yeah, I think yeah, so. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, it's that thing where the insert of Dana 
at the actual museum is coming up and I don't want to fuck that up. Um, we go to the Ghostbusters. We go to, or to Ray's occult bookshop, right? Which you will, of course, recognize from uh, the Ghostbusters Afterlife trailer at the end there with the red phone. Still there, everything. Picks it up. Uh, you know, uh, Egon and Ray are in there uh, working on it. Uh, the Working the case. They're looking at different books. They've pulled some different things. They're going back through it. This, that, the uh, other. Uh, you know, the one guy leaves. My best of the coven. Uh, as he leaves. I'm oh, sorry, Nick. I was going to say, as you guys know, that my plan for retirement is to run a small city target, right? You understand this, right? I've heard this. This, to me, just looks... Kevin, you can back me up on this. How cool does this bookshop look? It looks great. It's this little nook. I feel like... Like you, you would spit, like if there's a room in the back, that's where we play tabletop games. You know, people are playing Magic: yeah, The Gathering, back there maybe exactly. bringing some coffee. Someone brings like a like a hard cider, yeah. and everyone's like, "It's gonna get crazy, Andy." But I do think the problem is we go in the, for the first time ever. Never. We're leave. drinking some like uh, I don't know fountain drinks that we got. Yeah. Sure. And the first Easy. thing they say, "Hey, no drinks." We leave. Never, we'll never come back. Like the Magic uh, Shop. Like the magic Shop. Magic Shop. Never forget it. Never been in since. Uh, so, you know, uh, uh, Pete walks in, he does a little thing about like wanting to, you know, come up with some kind of, uh, witch's brew to spray on a penthouse pet or whatever. So that, you know, she'd have total submission or he'd have total submission. Uh, your book came in the hand of book. It's, you know, pathways to the rich and uh, to the rich and whatever successful. Uh, he gets wind though, that they're all working on stuff, right? And they like, knock off early, right? I'll let you buy me a calzone. Uh, but you know, that they're working on something. Egon, of course, makes it very clear that he's not supposed to know by clearing his throat. Uh, you know, they hem and haw about it and finally he says he grabs him by the ears dana dana barrett my dana what do you got kevin you're shaking your shaking your head no it's gonna seem like like a lot yeah you know it's just them it's just guys being guys whatever right uh from there we go to the museum or maybe it was before like i said but it doesn't matter this is where we meet janos this is where we set up the fact that uh dana's been working here volunteering here I forget which one it is uh part time while you know to get out of the house i guess while her it's like wonder woman maybe it's like wonder woman she was working there right what like because she couldn't be a concert celloist cellist yeah i don't know I, I i got i always got the I, i'm with kev i always got the the, the yeah. feeling that like that took too much of her time at night with rehearsals and things like that on a weekend so she got a day job no 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 the only thing we're debating here ladies and gentlemen is if it is a job or if it's a volunteer work we, that's what i'm she saying 100 so yeah. spells out yes i now that i'm my baby's yeah, yeah, farther along i'm going to go back to being a, right so my point was i was saying i feel like she that took too much of her time to raise her child so she went to her other career which was art restoration and that was her full-time job gotcha. remember because janush has a line where he's like you could you're getting really good at this or whatever you can study help me out or something like that help me out or whatever he's all creepy, creepy that, about it you would imagine that's a nine to five thing well, I don't think they let you do art restoration like whenever you want. Maybe it's like Google now. You can come in on Sunday and just get like no, a job done for the whole I, week and no one cares. I think that's a nine to five. And then with like, if you're doing a concert, they're doing those eight o'clock. Oh, yeah. You're working at concerts yeah. Friday nights, Saturday nights, Sunday nights. Yeah, you're yeah. you're working that. I mean, museums, Thursday, unless we're talking about night, night at the museum universe here, they're usually only open from like, you know, nine to five. The, I, I thought it was funny. Museum, she was playing her own music. At some point, it was just the scene you hear a cello, and then the camera goes over, and she's just with the cello. Like, All right, cool. Boom, boom, boom. Even, even the, that's what Andy, you do that, right? You watch yourself play, keep the the blade sharp. Keep the keep the blade sharp, Kevin. Keep the blade sharp. Right. Um, so yeah, all sharper. this stuff happens. Uh, uh, yeah, all this stuff happens. Uh, where they're there, Janos is creepy. He doesn't want to be called by his full name. Janos, there. Uh, Vigo gets w- wheeled in right in the background. Uh, he pulls a fuzzball out of her hair, clearly violating her personal boundaries. But he, it's clearly he's been this. At the very end, he says something along the lines of like, "Yeah, you know, I, a date thing." And she's like, "No." And he's like, "There's something wrong with my breath." You know, every time I say it, whatever. Blah, blah. And so uh, she realizes she has an appointment with the Ghostbusters. She leaves. Uh, Janos is like, I think she likes me. I, I think she likes me. Uh, and Vigo, of course, is looking. Vigo's there. He understands that Janos is a mark who also wants something. And he also understands, apparently, that Dana has a baby, maybe. But he's got enough of what he needs. From there, we're back at uh, Dana's apartment. Uh, this all is very she- convenient for Vigo. Uh, <laughs> very. Well, I mean, maybe Vigo made this all happen. You know what I mean? Maybe the slime was reporting back to Vigo and letting him know what was happening, you know? Who knows hey, how the ghosts work? Hey, boss, she's got a baby. She's got a kid, boss. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Have them bring me out of storage and roll me. <laughs> roll me there. Is there a feeble man who I can bend her on? <laughs> yes. Oh, this is perfect. This is just like the prophecy. Uh, so now Rakadana's, and this is where we, yeah, she's playing cello to the music that's playing to the thing. Uh, knock at the door. It's Egon. It's Ray. Oh, hey, so good to see you again. She goes to close the door. Pete bursts through. I thought I'd give us one more chance. You know, I'm just getting my heart broken again. 
<laughs> Ray apologizes, of course. You know, uh, he hurt me, tortured me, uh, pinched my ears. Uh, and then we're uh, off to the races here, right? Where uh, 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 Egon and Ray uh, want to see the baby. They go meet the baby. Uh, they're, you know, they're laying out all their equipment. Uh, while they're laying their equipment, asking questions to Dana, Peter plays the cello. Boom, he, boom, she boom, goes over boom. there and starts to... Boom, 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 boom. boom. I love this scene. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, she goes over there to talk to him. Ray and Egon run tests on the baby there. Yeah, none of this is going to hurt him. No, no, I don't think so. And he pulls out the weird, like, head grabber thing or whatever. Um, yeah, and a whole bunch of stuff happens here, right? So they do the auditory responses. Guess what? Baby Oscar, or Oscar he's totally fine. Nothing with him. Uh, we hop over to see. Uh, it's got to be tough casting a baby. You got to go to it was twins. Yeah, you gotta get yeah, they always, they cast, they, they always cast twins. Honestly, yeah. this baby yeah. kind of killed it. And then it was sure. like, I, it was pretty clear to me that one baby better than the other baby. But at the end of the day, shout out to <laughs> shout out to both babies, shout out to but good one baby, in yeah. particular. Yeah. yeah. I, I feel like do you want to name which one you like the best? <laughs> no. Okay. No. Name a couple scenes. Of the baby. Nailed it. Yeah. Or the oh, nailed it. when he was like, and then the other one when he was like. Yeah, yeah. perfect. It's true. Audio <laughs> listeners, you're gonna want to tune in for this on yeah. audio listeners. Yeah. Welcome perfect. to Rad Guys Talk Babies. <laughs> <laughs> this is where Tim ranks the babies of the Ghostbusters Cinematic Universe. Number one, it was one of the kids, one of the Oscars, yeah, and number two, baby. the other Oscar. <laughs> uh, so this is where you know we get more about everything with mainly for uh, Dana and uh, Pete. This thing, right? You, what happened to Mister Wonderful? I heard he ditched you. <laughs> he, he didn't ditch me. He ran off, you know, to be in the London Symphony Orchestra or whatever the hell it is. Also, one of the best orchestras in the world. Oscar weird name for a baby i'll just say that right now you poor yeah. man named after a hot dog yeah. great joke great joke um and this is as we've said here this all continues to escalate right egon and ray they go in there well first off you know uh dana gives uh, pete the kind of the cold shoulder uh and so he gets motivated to come over there and act like he knows what he's doing and try to help out with the baby this is when they tell him to get a stool sample uh this is when uh, they go into the room to start checking the toys and stuff uh you know it's revealed egon had no toys growing up not even a slinky i had a piece of a slinky but i straightened it uh great line, great line. loved it yeah. sure totally a, a, la a, a funny one yeah right uh meanwhile yeah vankman hanging out with oscar uh you know you want to play with a big kid and then he starts getting into it and then you know that he does some fake screaming and dana runs out there and she starts talking to him and like, nothing wrong with him right not that i can tell uh back inside they're doing uh, yeah they're back inside they're doing that thing uh in the in the baby's room testing everything he uh, vankman comes in he's like uh you know what's up nothing it's all clear and then egon's like i'd, I'd like to run some gynecological tests on the mother and he just goes Who would? <laughs> <laughs> great line uh so now it's time to go investigate uh where this actually all happened uh they go out into the street with the pke and the geiger counter uh they you know go across the street you know what are you honking about you're on the meter uh and this is when they find the honey pot right this uh giant uh, all burying the needle all sorts of valences and stuff cutting down to what we know will be the river of slime um this yeah okay uh yeah yeah so this is where we are already talking right they start uh dr drilling cutting going in there right this is when the cops roll up egon's there jack hammering uh like, what are you doing yo and they, who told you to stop cutting i didn't tell you to stop cutting come down here and uh, shake my monkey tree uh yeah you know they scare them off with just enough jargon and acting like they know what's going on or that they're just blue collar construction workers uh this is when they scan more they can see down there somebody's got to go down there yeah somebody does they both look at ray uh, i think this is where we cut off to the museum where yano she's working late on the vigo painting uh this is where he's touching it up and vigo does the lightning bolts out of his eyes zaps yano she drops yano to the ground uh you know starts laying it out for yano right of like uh the you know coming and this that and the other you know i vigo scourge of moldovia really Come really really tough, really tough to sort of differentiate possessed dude versus non-possessed dude and that's the thing is he's not super possessed it just seems like it brings out more of his bad uh intuition because well, he moment, wasn't like a great dude but he was a, you know a harmless creep i guess before he was creepy but there's a moment where he's like yes i'll do whatever you want that sounds great and then a, ba the, a child a child and he's like a, a, a child, child right? where he has that one <laughs> and really he does this right, weird like it? thing like that where it's like okay yeah. like is it fully yanosh anymore we don't, no, know. I don't think it's yanosh anymore no i, I think, think there's a little like, bit of yanosh and there's a little bit of not yanosh in there exactly because he has later he has that great line of like where are you from pal <laughs> the upper west side uh they, they we jump back to the ghostbusters now they're sending ray down there you know he goes through and he clears down there and what's he find it's a river of slime it must be forty thousand gallons of it or whatever right uh luckily ray brought the exact tool he would need for this job it's the only thing he brought on his belt yeah too. yeah 
Yeah, that's all you got. That's all you need, really. If you're gonna go, thing is uh, gonna scoop up slime. Get get ghosts that are uh, ethereal and you can't catch them. You gotta have a little pooper scooper for it with you. Exactly. So he gets lowered just low enough, stops there, starts scooping up slime. Uh, meanwhile, topside, uh, Con Ed shows up with the cops again, right? And like, you know, what are, the phone lines over there. What did I tell you? The phone lines over there. We already checked with Con Ed and the phone company, not with either of them. So tell me another one. And there's that. Tell me another one. There's a great moment. It was like a second while Bill Murray sets. I got a major gas leak down yeah, here. It's so fucking good. Like, you know what I mean? Fucking to Tim's point earlier, man. like everybody's killing it right here of just talking and being funny and doing their thing, right? Uh, while that's happening, topside though, down there, uh, the slime has figured out Ray's there. It starts reaching up, grabbing for his foot. Ray freaks out a bit. Uh, he's like, bring me up, bring me up, bring me up. Uh, they bring him up too quick. Ray's foot around. He kicks a thing that knocks a thing and lands down and block blackout for new york uh, just power outage all over new york boom 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 we see everything go down right um uh then we jump over to dana barrett's apartment where she has the blackout as well bless you jen uh and she uh you know uh has put it goes to check on oscar he's fine uh she comes back out there's knock on the door it's janos which is weird to show up on her doorstep but you know he was in the neighborhood he says he just wanted to check in to make sure everything was okay and can i come i can come in if you want and he, she's like no the baby he goes Woo. she's like no, he's oh, sleeping baby. Oh, she's like oh but oh, i would oh but i would oh but i, I would that. great line this guy uh doesn't so give credit in this movie he's the no. heart of this movie and oh man, blew my mind when he was on Ally McBeal later on with uh, without the accent. Because of course, oh, yeah. I was a dumb kid and assumed if you have an accent in a movie, you have an accent in real life. You don't know. What's yeah, he, I, I would mean, think I would have guessed that this was his only role ever in his career. <laughs> no, he did a bunch of stuff. Perfect was, game. You didn't remember him in Ally McBeal, Andy? Shame <laughs> on you. Yeah, I know. Yeah, hey, I didn't say that was something everybody should know, Tim. Right? Don't throw it in my face. <laughs> all right, Gia knew it too. One. So the dancing right. baby, all right, was a moment in time for all of us. Oh my gosh! You're so right. Ally McBeal's ticking biological. Greg, the amount. The amount of pediatrician offices that you would drive by in the Rio Grande Valley and they would have the sign ups sort of showing we're open or whatever. And it's one of those signs with all the lights that can kind of make images or whatever. There were so many dancing babies that, really? uh, on these displays. It was so bizarre. Really wow. bizarre. I wouldn't, um, I wouldn't have guessed that. Tim, did you talk about Yanush already and like the actor coming up with that accent and all that stuff? No, I didn't. Oh, so I read a piece of trivia when I was watching this um, that was talking about how he, the character was supposed to be just this like normal kind of bland secondary villain and the actor was like what if i pitched this like i developed an accent and a whole character that this care this actor or the sorry the character was from that region that vigo was from and that's why he sort of had that tie with him and that's why really? he sort of have this has the same accent as he does i think i forget where it's supposed to be where he was supposed to be from like whatever Moldavia. that what's Carpathia. that what was it Carpathia, Carpathia right like, and then moldavia yeah so he was like basically like i was i thought okay what if i was like with this character was from carpathia or whatever carpathia is now um and th that's why he has the accent and, and has a sort of kinship with with vigo just two lost souls out there trying to make it right you know he is uh, she what? also he is like, vigo. i'm really glad he is vigo. I'm, re <laughs> I'm really happy he like figured it out because like i that it does a lot for the movie Sure. The Upper you, West Side? You gotta love Janos. Like <laughs> um, she slams the door in Janos' face, she locks him out, uh, and then Janos turns and has the <laughs> the light bulb eyes Terrifying. to see as he walks. Yeah, totally, of course. Uh, once again, shit, remember, right? kids, he's possessed. He's not probably kind of, who knows. Uh, from there, we're right into the courtroom where the hammer is ready to preside over uh, uh, the old Ghostbusters here as they get tried. Uh, not Peck, Walter Peck is there to say, you know, make sure these guys go away for a long time. The uh, lawyer's like, or oh, the list of charges this way along, it shouldn't be that hard um or you know winston's there for support even though he will apparently just run away <laughs> when the, when the going gets rough winston will just run away and not help the ghostbusters oh, at all because yeah, no. he's never seen again uh but he's there to check in like oh yeah he's calling the hammer or whatever uh you know then it's a, a great reveal of rick moranis as the lawyer right and like i don't know about this i do mostly just tax stuff and uh, probate or something like I'm that. marked out man i'm it's marked great, out right because it's a great didn't yeah. expect him in the movie. Again, I didn't know shit going into this. So That's it's great. just like what when the movie starts, it. keeps going, I was just like, all right. Like, I, I, I'm missing my boy Rick. And I was like, I guess Giannis is kind of like that character in this to some extent, to some degree. <laughs> and then when Rick pops up, I was like, here we go. This movie's about to get fantastic. And every scene he's in, great. incredible. Great. Incredible. 10 out of 10. None nail the party scene from the first one no, for him. Sure. But, oh, man, I... You know, obviously skipping yeah. ahead, seeing him in the Ghostbusters outfit, sure. I was like, "This is all I've I ever wanted." <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, yeah, and he also like the, his introduction of just like the I think you guys are making a big mistake. I got my I got my degree. I got my law degree at night. That's okay, Lewis. We got arrested at night. Yeah. Uh, and then we're into the trial, and it's you know uh, they have the Con Ed guy there, right? And he's like, you know, oh, the, we, you know, the hammer is like, I, we don't, you know, the court doesn't, uh, it, you know, accept the existence of ghosts, and I don't either, kind of thing. Um, Con Ed guy's like all that stuff there. He's like, it's it's the stuff they pulled out of their you know their their van. It's there to catch ghosts. And what about this thing? And they hold up the slime. He's like, I've you know worked in this for. Well, however many years 30 years or whatever and i've never seen something like down there whatever it is they must have put it there and ray's like no we did it and they're like Silence, we're all in the court. of course this is another one too of like i understand the trial but like and i understand the sample they have which assumed assumedly is the sample that ray brought up with him right no one went down to check on this <laughs> to find a river of slime yeah. no one like from any or of the even, new york agencies even to repair the the line that got the broken that yeah. caused right? the giant blackout you went That's down. Well, we only went down from the top side. Yeah, we only yeah, went yeah. down we to the whole. Feet, yeah. Do you see a, a a pink glow from the thing? Ah, oh, we didn't go any further. All right, we weren't paid that much. We didn't have to do that. Uh, uh, this is the yeah, that, that also that they have this like judiciary restraint on them, right? Where they're like, it's illegal for them to to bust ghosts now. Yeah, I like that. I, I, I like that, that 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 being a reason of like yeah another reason why the Ghostbusters there right they're tied up in so much court shit from the explosion from yeah. State Puff from everything the Sokovia else. Courts. Scobie yeah. Accords, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, like Miguel and Coco can't can't play music. Mm -hmm. Exactly. I uh, remember me. Uh, this is then we get uh, we get a uh, Vankman on the stand, like we were already talking about, right? Where yeah, it's leading the witness, but it's really leading the prosecutor, right? Because he keeps whispering everything, and then Lewis keeps saying it or whatever. Like you remember? What you say? Oh, okay. Yeah, exactly. I think we found them before, enough. That was before the opening remarks. It was like, "What's how I turned to a dog?" And they say, "Oh, Thank right, you. right, right." What's how I turned to a dog? <laughs> <laughs> He Listen, the blackout it. was a problem for everybody. I, I was trying to there for two hours, and I had to make the whole, whole time. <laughs> that means poop. You had to poop, everybody. I'm not he's so perfect. Poop. Yeah. I don't think anyone else could have delivered that no. line so no, he's so perfectly, right. fucking brilliant, so earnest. Uh, so yeah, you know. Uh, it, then it's a uh, time for cross examination or whatever. The lawyer gets up there and you know has a bunch of great stuff here too, right? Have you you took it upon yourself to dig a, a very large hole in the middle of First Avenue? Well, there's so many other holes in First Avenue. We really don't think anybody would notice. Every laughs, silence. Uh, you know, and they go a little bit into this, and he does the line. You know, sometimes shit happens, and who are you gonna call? Uh, and that's where we come in, and like before that part, and like the Ghostbusters like nod at each other or whatever. Just like you know, supernatural. You see, you're saying that you know this is your own supernatural playground or whatever. Sometimes that shit happens. Who are you gonna call? Um, from there, you know, we are. Uh, if he slams this thing again, maybe the first bubbles of slime happen. Uh, but then it's time for the you know uh, 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 findings, the ruling, uh, right? Of like you know, I find you all guilty. You know, if I, I, the, the judge really getting into it really it sucks it up. i think my least favorite part of the movie besides statue of liberty was this judge i like the judge because he's but it is very much like i was talking about earlier with the cartoon business right kevin by the way i've been waiting for you Have, are you gonna come off the bench and defend your man on the bench here this you, the judge where you know the judge from i don't remember at the this moment. is buddy in ozark when i was watching ozark i was very much like oh man the old man that lives with them they buy the house from him. They he has lived. Oh there. my god! Never, yeah, I never would have called it. That good job. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's always I mean, naked. That's for me, it went the other way. Yeah, yeah, he's the guy who's always naked. naked. It's the, for me, it went the other way of watching Ozark and be like, "Oh my god, it's the hammer!" Holy um, shit! The hammer. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I, he's terrifying. <laughs> Anyways, he does the whole thing, and, I, I wanna, and the, the the he's yelling. The slime starts bubbling. The Ghostbusters are trying to get his attention. He won't have it. Right. I would reach back to a, a worse form of justice and had you burned at the stake. Boom. Sclary Brothers pop out, right? Uh, very uh, crazily animated and looking caricatures of <laughs> men in electric chairs. <laughs> okay. Uh, Ghostbusters were already under the table, right? Uh, they pop up and the judge like, Sclary Brothers. They come in and he jumps over. The fucking bench explodes. All hell's breaking loose. He slides over to Ghostbusters. Scolari Brothers tried it for murder. Gave him the chair. <laughs> this is like this is a simulating yell, obviously, on the soundstage while they do this. Why don't you tell him you just don't believe in ghosts? Uh, bench comes up. They throw it. People are getting evacuated and running out again. Winston saw all this from the back of the courtroom. Was like, not. Nope. I'm I, a part timer, I, man. I respect my judicial restrangement order. I'm out of here. He, everybody's running. Uh, they run around the back, right? Uh, the door is locked. They can't get out. Uh, they're all there yelling at each other. Um, you know, 
Uh, then, then there's a scream. They all do the look around, which is like the first image I ever saw in the newspaper from Ghostbusters 2 when they were like, Ghostbusters 2 is coming soon. And it was all of them looking around as the woman gets carried out by the Sclary Brothers. Uh, they run back there and he's like, you got to help me. And Earl Vankman's like, they're coming. You're next, Bubbles. Uh, you got to help me. You know, and you don't talk to me. Talk, don't talk to us. Talk to our lawyer. And Lewis pops in there, right? And uh, he's like, that's me. Uh, they, they can't expose themselves due to that blue thing I got from her. And you don't want us exposing ourselves. All right, case dismissed. You know, order is... Uh, rescinded and this is you know the guys get to march out there put on the proton packs a huge moment for me right here right as a kid and as an adult right it's like, it's like triumphant music they put it on haven't tried this stuff in a while well, the half-life you know half uh, the cells have a half-life of five thousand years uh they put it on the boom do re ego um and then it's this you know moment of quiet and then boom the chairs start popping off one by one sclary brothers pop uh guys shoot at them uh they we get a little bit of ghostbusters zapping for a while right and then they the ghosts disappear again as they do every time and when there's a mate when there's a major ghost <laughs> the guys look around thinking they might have actually done it this time maybe it was a total protonic reversal it wasn't they reappear uh the boys zap some more shoot some stuff um you know eventually the scene though, for me was like a a, a big mix of of hit and miss where sure. I really liked them getting back together, then powering up for the first time, the face off against this ghost. I really enjoyed. Didn't like the do re Egon line. There was like some of the back and forths of dialogue where I'm like, this felt like improv that they should have cut or should have at least like used a different take on. Tighten up uh, a bit. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Cause sure. it's like, it's, this should have been a like, Oh shit. They're back scene. And it kind of felt like, Oh, uh, they're still just doing this. Sure. I, uh, yeah, I, I understand that. I, for me, and again, I'm in a different place with it and was as a child, right? Like, just them putting on the packs, acknowledging they hadn't had the packs. The Do Ray Egon thing, what's, again, and I know whatever but like what's weird for me on a couple of different things, again, where I think, hey, man, this movie's way more like the cartoon than it is the show, is like, the Do Ray Egon thing almost plays like something they would have done before, like that I should remember from something else. Not 100%, but to an, a degree, right? But then definitely they, you know, but they get the ghost, they spin him around, they get him in the trap, boom, boom, they got him, uh, you know, uh, two in the box, ready to go. We be, and it's like, what the fuck were you guys <laughs> like in nowhere in the first movie did I see you having this? And granted, there was montages of you really being Ghostbusters and really doing it. But if we're to be believed that after the last one, ghost either went away or you were just immediately restrained that was the end of it like it's interesting to have this whole like pep talk speech at the end of it doesn't matter they do it lewis comes in wow and then it, it's just like ghostbusters one the doors fly open we're the best we're the beautiful we're the only ghostbusters just like when they come out of the sedgwick of we came we saw we kicked its ass and just like in ghostbusters one we're right into a montage now of this time the ghostbusters being fucking popular is all hell but also being back right and that is of course the big uh, uh, uh thrust of this it's the boys running around it's the ecto 1a racing out with now the uh, stripes on the side we believe you call this number you know no ghost logo on the uh fr the hood of the car uh new colored lights all sorts commercials of stuff. merchandise yeah exactly the co we're back yeah now we get the commercial yeah of course of uh, uh lewis tully and janine we have the reveal of janine right ghostbusters yes they're ba we're back right down to the camera right just delivering again the hits back to you or whatever uh the new suits debut the new logo debuts uh there's the lewis janine commercial that you know walter peck not walter peck sees and collapses at us what uh, but then later dana sees it too when she's restringing her cello right wait a second half price have we all gone mad <laughs> maybe pete tell him he gone oh you mean <laughs> the ghostbusters hot beverage thermal mug which i still have upstairs still have it upstairs everybody and Good. the free balloons for the kids uh i love that and free balloons for the kids <laughs> so right or whatever which is great but yeah then you know throughout it is them this is the run dmc ghostbuster song which is dope as fuck and it's uh you know them uh busting the ghosts in the jewelry store with the weird setup to like get it or not jewelry store. i guess the crystal store and all the crystal falls uh, Wait, i the, think i disagree i think this run dmc song sucks right? is this, you have no fun you have it. no joints is this you. where they're just like sing rapping i kind of but i didn't happening. care chief i just screamed for help when yeah. ghostbusters ghostbusters again a yeah picture, i think i hated this song picture six-year-old greg miller jamming out to his winnie the pooh record player listening to this shit though you can see why i love this fucking song i don't care how bad it is in my in my mind like you're wearing pjs that are way way too small for you yeah, sure and you're just rocking out like rocking out 
And, and Jamie Kennedy is like, it. we got to get you some new PJs. You're like, no! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's a slightly smaller Extra version of your screen senior man. photo. Ghostbusters! Yeah. Slightly Ghostbusters smaller. They, it, we, we are your friendly neighborhood Ghostbusters. That's what they said to me. We are the busters of any G-H-O-S-T. Like, fucking, are you kidding me right now? Because Run DMC was the greatest musical artist on the planet in 1989, and this song crushed it, all right? Anyways, uh, there's some more good stuff happening. A Ghostbusters running through New York. I uh, like that. I love this uh, Central Park. They bust this ghost, the jogging ghost, yeah, which like all they this. did was just wait for him to come by, and they hit the thing. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Um, they get him. Like I said, Ghostbusters, it's Ghostbuster Mania again, ladies and gentlemen. We're back to it. Congratulations. It, in this montage, we see the, the woman with the fur. Yeah. No, no, that's no, coming that's up. That's, coming, that's, up. that's coming up. That's another great fucking one. You know what I mean? Another great jam. Yeah, I'm telling you guys, when you get when you get home tonight from this hard day of work, you pop on the Ghostbuster 2 soundtrack just for me. All right, listen to it. Come I'm on, looking it up right now. I actually don't think it's a, the run DMC song that I don't like. I think it's another one Bobby later. Brown, can try, oh, well, don't I guess we're gonna not that it can't be that. No, that, that is, song's too good. That's a certified that song slap. is too that's good. Slap. Don't come at Flip City, please. Because that's the one you're talking about where the, the thing I know who that yeah, know who that you know. No, I think Andy's talking about the one that's it's the Ghostbusters, but it's like sped up and like very generic. That's this song, right? That's what I'm thinking of. Well, I mean, you have the run DMC going over it, but yeah, yeah, I just don't like Maybe the Run DMC part is great, but the rest of it just seems like, and this is no disrespect to our titles on this, but it seems like they couldn't get the rights to the Ghostbusters songs. They kind of just changed a few notes and sped it up a little bit. You know what I mean? Sure. I'm with Nick. Um, also, it. In, it ain't it. I mean, it, again, it's I'm you know I have no musical taste. I just and I I'm like sorry. Tim has so. great usual taste. Greg, great. <laughs> Tim is the tastemaker. He says the shit ain't it. The shit ain't it. Okay. Yeah, what yeah, about Flip City? Though? Do we like Flip City? Oh, it's a ten out of ten. Yeah, oh, fuck it, what a jam. All right, is that Bobby Brown's the Bobby Brown song? Huh? Is that Bobby Brown song? No, that's that's uh um on our own. Okay, well that one's ten out of ten. I don't know about your Flip City stuff. Everybody you know take what? a break, go to Spotify right now, go to Ghostbusters 2, go to Flip City and tell me that song doesn't slap. All right, I'm sure it does. Uh no, has gone for Flip City. And it's the one where the Titanic comes in and the giant things moving around the arch and shit. That's when the fucking sp- you guys are crazy. You guys don't know music, all right? Next year, you're going to tell me the Beatles are better than Taylor Swift. Get the fuck out of here with your wow. bad takes. Wow. Back to this, though. Uh, like I said, a bunch of cool shit happens. This is where Lewis meets Slimer and runs into the couch and falls over. Uh, Egon and Ray are getting slime out. of. They're really high- hamming up the slime business. They're getting it out of a phone in New York because there's fucking slime everywhere now, right? No, people still don't believe in it. Whatever. Uh, however, we're driving home the slime angle to the point that when we come out of the montage, we go back to the firehouse where the guys are taking some slime out of uh, the uh, microwave oven, which was very big in 1989. And they talk, they put it down, and they do the whole like, "You, you worth this piece of slime?" And, oh, mood slime. We're we're driving home that the the slime is, of course, uh, you know, feeds off negative energy and and activates off of it, which we already knew obviously from watching the judge do it. But they're spelling this out for you, which is very very nice, right? Uh, well, they also, it, it doesn't. Feed off of positive energy yeah you know we say not kinds nurturing things to it you're not sleeping with it are you <laughs> they all look at egon it's always the quiet one you so you do <laughs> uh which again as a kid i was like oh he sleeps next to the slime that's great and now think about it kevin it's him putting his hand into the slime and rubbing it over his genitals to come oh i thought i thought it's he was grabbing the beaker the air. and shoving or you maybe in, like a flashlight uh, sort of flask yeah maybe. I mean, i'm not 100 yeah. sure there's different interpretations yeah, it makes the fart noises but in my all fan- I'm sure of is this didn't work. This was fucking weird yet yeah, again. Weird. Keep the weird, weird sex shit out of this. Stop trying to fuck the ghost, guys. Come on. It's something for the parents. Fuck it's that. an easy you one for your parents. About, right? This, yeah, this is that. something for the parents. Hold Can on, Nick. What, what's your defense of this? I was just. Oh, I'm not defending it. It's not a great. It's a great. No, no, no. It's not. I don't have a defense for this either. Okay. I'm sure it was funny back then. I'm sure it got cackles in the theaters. Uh, before but to distract from that though, let's show you a different thing. They grab the toaster, they bring the toaster to the pool table, or yeah, the pool table. Uh, they put some in there. You know, we've been experimenting with all sorts of music, but it loves Jackie Wilson. And then, and Vink was like, "What? It it, it sings and it, the you know sounds just like Jackie." But no, it starts popping around and dancing. Right? It loves Jackie Wilson. It, it's a very positive song, of course. Love keeps lifting me higher. Uh, and so like they're excited, blah blah blah. Uh, you know, that's cool, positive stuff. Uh, it pops off. Uh, you know, it shoots out some toast. Uh. Vankman scoops up the thing and he's like you know this is going to be my number one booty gift item for the holidays and uh, you know Winston's like yeah but the first time somebody gets angry it, it, it'll eat their hand 
No, we put a warning label on. Bah, and Vankman psychs them all out. The old man-eating toaster bit. Uh, they say, get them, and they tackle them. And like, oh, look at these 40-year-old men. They're just boys being boys roughhousing in the firehouse. Um, this whole toaster from here, scene felt so bizarre. And yeah, it felt totally. like it didn't belong in this movie at all. Or like in any movie, for that matter. But like, I just thought it was really, really, really out of place in this. I mean, like, again, like, this is, you know, the bad way of it. But, like, watch everybody's performance in this. Everyone is so awkward around the pool table watching the stupid toaster dance. Whoa, shake it up. Like, like you know what I mean? Like, oh, God, like, what are you doing? Like, why is this the you know, set If it had been in the first one, it would have been, like, the thing jumps. And then someone would have waited and then said a quippy line. And then it would have been done. You know what I mean? It would have been handled a lot better. But I mean, obviously, this is just set up to, to get to the Statue of Liberty part, sure. right? It's just all yeah. exposition to... to and all this to, stuff somehow justify how a nintendo controller can control the statue of liberty if we just spray a little bit of the the slime in her forehead and and that's the thing yeah like so yeah you know fuck it don't even worry about it we're not (laughs) instead we're gonna get to what is arguably probably the funniest line in the movie one that i've said for years and nick likes so much that he texted me out of the blue last night while watching this film (laughs) the best line ever uh vankman goes to get dana uh from the museum he comes in he walks up to the old man at the front desk here see dana barrett oh down the hall dr vankman world of the psychic yeah oh it used to be one of my two favorite shows oh yeah and this isn't one of the like watch bill murray the entire scene oh what was the other one bass masters <laughs> bill murray's face just falls and he immediately starts walking away it's a fishing show yeah i know bass masters yeah, yeah, bass masters. <laughs> sure yeah <laughs> uh, he goes, so he goes on the so the way there right uh finds dana working on the thing you have lovely eyes because the thing's all zoomed out on her or well, on her head or whatever right uh yano sensing this man has some kind of romantic connection to uh dana uh comes down there and he's like you know oh, who's this you can introduce me your friend uh yes blah, blah, and you know they go back and forth uh then you know vigo's over there he makes fun of vigo uh this is the kitten thing too right where he if he, he has carpathian kitten loss uh, none of this works for me he goes over there he's like oh let's paint him in like no no i think you should go now uh so vankman goes to leave and dan he's talking about how much stupid that thing is. <laughs> never get a green card with that attitude uh talking about how stupid yanosh is about this painting or whatever and dan is like you know i hate that painting like i you know i get the feeling it's watching me sometimes and they both look back over and they find uh janos talking to the painting right and they not like being like weird about it and they're like that is weird you know what i'll get the guys back here the guys will help me on this one um um now we get the bathtub scene right dana goes back home uh she's gonna uh, uh give a little oscar a bath uh she's also gonna take off her shirt something for the parents uh and while she, the water's running behind her it turns into slime she turns around it's slime there she screams again obviously there's a lot of ptsd of a ghost and shit in her apartment Dude, this shit uh, terrified me when i was a kid oh sure yeah the, the she runs out the thing like snaps at her tries to grab her uh she gets out of there they run to vankman's apartment they bang on that door he's mm-hmm. on the couch passed out he gets up he goes there he lets them in uh you know okay cool you know you're gonna stay here but he calls over to ray at the firehouse uh ray is doing a bunch of uh uh, tests uh with a little shower cap on the slime i think yeah egon's there too he's doing the test too um um yeah you know you're gonna stay here with uncle pete for a while or whatever he's talking to baby oscar and uh, uh, her uh he breaks out the joe willie namath uh, uh shirt he's had that some woman got from joe namath and he didn't ask how he doesn't want to know how but now we're gonna use it as a diaper rather than go to the corner store in new york to see he doesn't sleep doesn't matter uh they do that oscar's there then it's uh you know the uh they do the thing with the bed of like you know how do you want to do sleeping arrangements? I could sleep like this. You spoon me. I could go the other way, but I choke on your hair. You know, you do out there. I'll do in here. Great. Uh, this is also then the uh, a, a line that didn't work for me as a kid, obviously, because I'm a stupid kid. But as an adult, I do really appreciate that. Like, I, I'm going to put but first. I'm going to put down Oscar. <laughs> do you, do you want to do it? Or he's like, can I do it? She's like, yeah, <laughs> you're short. You're a terrible burden on your mother. You're terrible you're burden on your mother. It's <laughs> <laughs> funny as hell. Uh the uh yeah so now it's uh, the next day we've set up the museum we've had the slime so now the boys the ghostbusters roll up to the museum uh they walk in triumphantly right and this is the great line from pete of like sucking the guts guys were the ghostbusters, the ghostbusters everybody yeah. sucks in their guts right uh janos of course doesn't want them there and starts bopping around oh outside right they had already gotten the printout from the computer or whatever of like vigo the carpathian right like you know 100 and whatever it is 16 years old right uh you know stabbed shot or stabbed drawn in quarter blah, blah blah final words were death is but a doorway time is but a window i'll be back uh 
they walk inside you know yanosh one's over uh, who, who, who ray's like who's this spud or whatever and he's all yours ray sick him ray grabs him pulls away everybody starts going around doing their things uh you know uh uh Vankman will goes to take photos of vigo uh ray goes over there to do the, the, the whatever this thing is to get readings off of it hanging off the ladder uh vigo eventually looks in ray's eyes ray looks in vigo's eyes kind of gets not possessed but like entranced we'll say right um they get a bunch of photos uh they you know they yank they they you know breaking a lot of laws here you know it's definitely a physical space issue too where they just yank yanosh out of the way right you know, you know they are violating the thing or whatever but eventually egon you know uh calls uh vinkman off on the thing they've got what they need i've worked with better but not many i love uh, that line i love that really good, line. Right? uh <laughs> they leave there and this is where ray and egon will go develop the footage but i think We'll start there. Ray and Egon go back to the firehouse and they start developing the footage. They have the great conversation about what they want to eat. You know, they go back and forth on the different food as we all have. Get to pizza finally, thick or thin, Chicago. Uh, they pull it out. What is that? That's the river of slime. It's it's Vigo's uh, disembodied head there. Them looking at the river of slime while they're hemming and hawing about the slime. The door locks from the inside uh, behind them. Uh, and then everything bursts into flames. They can't get the door unlocked. They can't go. What are we going to stick our heads in the toilet? Uh, and then the, the, here he is. You want him to do something in this film, Tim. There it is. Winston Zeddemore breaking down the door, coming in with the fire extinguisher, putting it all out. It was at that moment that I was like, oh, I haven't seen him in a while. Yeah. <laughs> Since he abandoned them at the court hearing. <laughs> Listen, I don't want to see you guys go to jail, and I definitely don't want to help you bust these ghosts. I'm out. Anyways, um, then back at um, um, back at uh, home base, Peter's apartment, um, the, uh, Peter has a bag that Ray and Egon put together for – no, no, that Vankman did uh, – a bag of clothes for Dana. She's in a towel. He's going to take her out on the town uh, to celebrate, you know, or just to get her mind off of this. I don't want to. Um, I got a babysitter. I don't want some weirdo, some weirdo or whatever. It's uh, Janine Melnitz, a stranger. Janine Melnitz from my staff. Um, just a great pronunciation of it. Um, yeah, and that's it. They're going to go to dinner and they're going to have a fancy night in the town. This then queues up. Um, um, oh, I guess I did these out of order because they would have already been gone. It doesn't really matter, guys. Uh, get off my fucking back, Kevin. Jesus. Uh, Lewis and uh, get off his uh, back. Get off my up. back. Janine are leaving. Um, and this is where you know. All right, good night. And then Lewis asks her out in the crosswalk and does like I like where he's like, "Would you like to?" No, no. Would you like to get? You know, he tries to do a, a big gruff voice. I can see this is how I imagine it was when Jared Petty asked his wife out. That's what I like to imagine it was. You know, uh, what I mean? this is exactly how it was when I asked Dia. <laughs> Would you like to get some dinner? Um uh, and so yeah, she can't, but she, she's babysitting. Do you want to babysit with me? No, uh, I'm just she, like I just can't wait till we get to the 2016 Ghostbusters and Greg Cat remember a single line of it. But this one, <laughs> even number two, it is literally every line of the movie. I am shocked. I am shocked. I'm, sh I'm shocked when you can do any movie like this. Like, oh, I just watched mm. you know, quick. Iron Man two for the first time in ten years last night, and I can tell you the, the plot of what happened in a line or two that people said. This is literally every single thing. I could not be more scared and impressed simultaneously of a human being's capacity. Okay, so you like it because it sounds like you could be pissed off on me. Yeah, it sounds oh, no. like you're mad. Okay, cool. Jamaica, Jamaica. I don't like it. It's an hour and a half in. Like, I got shit to do. Come on, let's wrap it up. I mean, up. I do have a thing to do tonight, too, so yeah. I do need to speed it up at some point. Let's speed it up. Um, it's not even a great movie. You know I mean? Like, <laughs> let's get going. Come on. But it is we that thing. And I, well, I mean, it warms my heart to do, say it because I want you to know I feel like I'm doing a bad job. I feel like I'm job. not nailing the, like, I'm like, I don't remember how old Vigo was when he died. I feel bad about that. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Please, he was like 100, right? He was 106. I'm dead serious. I'm dead serious. I feel like I'm failing you guys. Holy not knowing off the top of my head how fucking old this goddamn asshole was when he got killed. It doesn't oh, matter. God. Fake uh, man. So Fake man. Pete and Dana come downstairs dressed to the nines. Uh, you probably recognize this dress on Sigourney Weaver from all the press photos you've seen for Ghostbusters 2. Uh, as soon as they, or as soon as Pete hits the street, the Ecto-1 rolls up. All the guys get out in rain slicker gear. And Pete has the other great line, right? Let me guess. <laughs> all you can eat rib night at the sizzler no 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 they're you know they're going underground to go to the the river of slime again to do some tests there might even be a tremendous surge in the cockroach population down there or whatever uh <laughs> dana comes out uh the guys kind of put together like oh this is a date they're dressed fancy like this yeah. isn't what we thought it was uh and pete again, another great bill murray performance here of turning to her and being like listen you want to blow this whole thing off and go down there you got even thinks there might be a tremendous surge in the cockroach population and she looks at him smiles and goes taxi and he turns around women <laughs> and so they go to the date uh, uh ray winston and egon go uh down to the to get into the river slime 
And so we jump right to them. They're coming down in the rain slicker gear with the little mining caps on. Uh, they start making fun of Winston to a degree, right? I'm talking about the rats and all this other stuff. And like you can see Egon and Ray kind of like, ooh, ooh, like I'm like, I don't like this either. Like, you know, you know, don't be mean to Winston. Just be cool with Winston. He's cool. Um, and they keep walking, right? And this is they finally do the echo thing of hello, hello, hey, hey, hello. Winston. And he already referenced <laughs> we should go get the packs or whatever. And I'm like, we should really go get the packs. So they turn around to do but that. The proton it's packs, fun. which is the first time they've ever said proton pack in the series, right? Mm. I think that was, I saw a piece of trivia that said this is the first time anyone's ever referred to them on screen as a proton pack. Hmm. Because remember oh. in the beginning where you guys, look, we haven't at used him, this look stuff, at the gear there. in a we've while. This we've never had a successful test of this equipment. Gear, right? Look and at then this in, the, in this one, he goes, hey, guys, it's been two years since we moved this gear. And then they got the bang up line from Hell Ramos. Was like, he's like, I wonder if they still work. He goes, they should. They have a half-life of 5,000 years. Yeah, yeah, Which, yeah. by the way, if Hell Ramos came up with technology that has a battery life of 5,000 years, that's a, that's a pretty worthwhile thing. It's an unlicensed right? nuclear accelerator. Yeah. yeah. That's a great call. That's a great call. Yeah. I never thought about that. You're right. I think this is That's what in this. And then the second time is like pretty soon when homeboy at the get run into the hotel is like, can hey, can oh yeah, I, can I get a proton pack for my, my that's brother, Bobby brother? Get that's one Bobby of the Brown right there. That's Bobby Brown, but it, I knew it. I knew it was like some cameo. I just couldn't tell. Bobby Brown, um, anyways, though they, they turn around, they, they start <laughs> to leave, and this is where there's the severed heads on all the spikes or whatever, and they're like, oh, 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 like a lot of overacting here or whatever. They tr they they're like really committed to leaving now, and that's when they hear the train coming. You're like, no, that you know these trains these lines haven't been used in years. Yada yada yada. And then sure as shit, it's a ghost locomotive, a uh, spectral locomotive rocketing past the farm where my grandmother moved, lived, uh, grew up. I, you know, everybody gets out of the way except Winston who gets it. Uh, 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 you know, Egon pops back up and has the quiz for him of like, oh my gosh, you know, must have been this one that de derailed the 19, whatever the hell it is. Did you get the engine number? Sorry, I missed it. I like that. Uh, and then Ray's missing. Where's Ray? Ray, Ray, Ray. Ah, I found it this way. Um they they go i'm just gonna put it here I, we probably cut back to vinkman yeah we definitely cut back to vinkman actually then no we don't cut back to vinkman i found it it's over here they go down and it's the river of slime this is it congratulations wow we found it let's get some readings uh winston does the little drop in the thing it's six feet 12 feet 12 and it just keeps getting oh man clearly it's getting fucking pulled yeah okay and then uh, they all start panicking uh they can't get his belt off he gets yanked in uh ray and egon look at each other they hold their nose and they jump in we now jump over to the fancy restaurant where uh pete and dana are out to dinner and uh this is i'm gonna do it here the where she does the toast to him to the most you know uh charming and i forget what the next is i'm gonna get the comments wrong again i'm sorry i'm failing you guys in this uh but it, it goes oh it's me it is you it is you uh and it's them re they then talk a little bit about their relationship and why it failed right and like it's when you refer started referring to me as the old, this is the ball old ball and chain, and chain. that's what i left <laughs> that's that what i left and actually you know what that might have been no that's here right that one it's or is, enough, yeah. well it's either that or when i they, thought they, i didn't know that was actually off. a lot earlier that was in yeah, the it was apartment. when they then they met in the apartment right this yeah. is just them talking about it and like this is them that was this her trying like, to hurt him fuck, this Craig's is them rekindling the and her being like okay. uh you know you know you give i think with positive reinforcement like this i can have myself whipped into shape by the end of the century Andrew's well why don't you Andrew, give yeah. me a jingle in the year 2000 why don't i give you a jingle right now I love this scene. They have, they it's have, I think they actually have better chemistry in this movie than they 100%. Have. They actually have a relationship. Chemistry, yeah. yeah. They actually are given a relationship right here rather than just like, oh, yeah, you know, like Bill Murray he, incessantly hitting on her for no yeah. reason and creeping exactly, her out. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Uh, I think they kiss here. I'm going to say they kiss here. Nobody cares. Um, uh, yeah. So then the guys come out of the, 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 oh, yeah, they come out of the, the, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle, uh, New York uh, uh, so, uh, uh, sewer cap goes away. The guys come out covered in uh, uh, slime. Winston and Ray start fighting each other. Egon comes up, puts it together. Everybody get naked. Take off your clothes. Whip out your shalongs. Everybody starts taking off their clothes and whipping out their shalongs. And they're like, yeah, you know, it was, the, oh, man, I, Ray, I was going to kill you. Yeah, I was ready to tell your partner. It's, it's the stuff. It's pure concentrated evil. It's the slime. And it all flows right here to the museum where the Vigo uh, painting is. You know what I mean? Like, oh, my God. Well, where's it going? You know, it all flows right here. Does it stop right here? Where does it go from here? It doesn't matter. It's it whole right emotion here. thing and, like, using emotions is kind of the crux of the movie and, like, the yeah. bad and good and all that stuff. Like, obviously, they're setting it up here. They set it up earlier with all the shit. None of it really works for me. And, like, the, using the Statue of Liberty as a sign of good, like, that. All, it's too complex and convoluted and just whatever. But it all ending up with them towards the edge just feel, I love you. 
I love you, man. Yeah. Like, you know what? Hey, I love you too. Yano's delivery is so yeah. good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I man, I want to point out that I, I've, I've been so kind of confused as to what, what felt off with Winston Zeddemore, and I was like, is he wearing a, a, some sort of hairpiece that makes his hair look thicker and stuff? No, it's just he doesn't have a mustache. And yeah, no mustache. Yeah, no, no, that's no. what it is. It threw me off so much. Oh my god, he he needs the mustache forever now. You're like forever. a baby when the dad like shaves. You know what I mean? Do you think Andy, if I went in and digitally put a mustache on every one of his scenes, <laughs> do you think he'd love this movie more? Possibly, yeah. Had, like motion track it all like perfectly. Yeah, just, Nick, please, please do that. Give me at least one. Go do a Photoshop of one Ghostbusters two scene with the, the mustache, please. That's what I want by the end. I'll do it right now. Um, while all this is happening, uh, we at some point I checked in on uh, the babysitting. Which was the whole like uh, you know uh, Lewis is really good with the baby. He's talking. He's doing seven dwarves, but he's doing it very like tax ev- you know, evasion wise and like you know work and paying your people. And then he puts the baby down. And then he comes out. You quite go with children. And the, this is the whole thing where Janine's got that ball between her legs or whatever. Uh, you know what I mean? It, 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 why don't you come sit next to me? Okay. And he comes. Uh, uh, the, I, I used to have a roommate. Then my mom moved to Florida. Then he comes <laughs> and sits next to her, right? And she's like, I want to have a ch- child. And he, she flips her leg over uh, his leg. And he goes, tonight? <laughs> so like, good. But he says it like he's not against it. You yeah, know what yeah I mean? totally, totally. Like it's like it's not a I'm a, like I'm 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 a whole hundred percent opposed to this. Like tonight, like I'll do it. I'm down. Yeah, but. yeah. yeah. Uh, and so they start making out or whatever. Uh, from there, we jump. Uh, well, like I said, that was nebulous. That's been happening. Uh, but what we do jump is after the slime stuff, we go back to the fancy uh, restaurant, right? And it's the boys coming in covered in slime, uh, ruining the date, running over to the table. Oh, we die. They're all excited because they've done this whole thing. Of course, uh, everybody's freaking out. Uh, there's the great line for, you know, he, I think he, Ray gets slime on the woman behind them and the man back there. For your uh, uh, trivia purposes, Tim, do you know who the man is? No, I do not. The man is, and I don't remember his name, but the man is like the first like Ghostbuster cosplayer there ever really was. Like he was the dude who like I remember reading about like Time cool. Magazine as a kid who like actually went to kids' birthday parties. He had already done the Ecto One. He had his own suit. He had done all the different stuff. Yeah, there's um, a, there's a ton of cameos, and I didn't recognize a, a lot of the names. I didn't see that one. Uh, we went through most of the ones, or at least people like casually mentioned ones like uh, Mary Ellen Trainer and stuff. Uh, but uh, Luis Troy appears as the woman with the possessed fur coat. Ben Stein plays a public works official for the mayor. Bobby Brown was the the doorman mm-hmm. that uh, we talked about earlier. And uh, Cheech Marin eventually we see <laughs> yeah, uh, as, yeah. Yeah, as a, the doc supervisor. Uh, but the big one is uh, Bill Murray's brother, Brian Murray, yeah, plays Brian the Will Ghostbusters yeah. uh, psychiatric doc- doctor. Yeah. It's, um, they're in a lot of movies together, by the way, and I fucking love that. Yeah, he's the mayor of Punxsutawney, too. Yeah. And, 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 and I, 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 I tell the story. I told the story on stream actually with Snowbike Mike. While we're here, and we're talking about Brian Doyle Murray, right? Uh, we're talking about uh, the doctor who gets admitted. You know, when he shakes hands with uh, Peck, not Peck, and then asks him about like all the stuff when he has the Ghostbusters around the table. <gasps> Yeah, it's Bill's brother. Yeah, he's in a lot of stuff with him. And like, there's an awesome story I learned at the Ghostbusters convention I did that one time after E3 where I went and hosted the panel about the remastered video game. And uh, it was with the guy who made it uh, and then the new guys from Saber Interactive, but one of the guys who was like lead on the project back in the day. And he told the story of like, you know, the run up to making the game, Bill Murray was b- being very Bill Murray and being non committal. So they were like, ah, like everybody's in except Bill Murray. Like, what are we going to do? There's no way to, you know, you're called there. You have to call that 1 800 number and leave a message so he'd get back to him, kind of shit. All this fucking crazy stuff. And somebody had the brilliant idea of recasting the mayor. And so they had, they were going to have Lenny, the, go, the the mayor from Ghostbusters, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, also nine and a half weeks. I marked out when I was watching that the other week and saw oh. Lenny in there because I've never seen him in something else. Uh, they were going to have him be the mayor. But somebody was like, wait, what if we try, what if we cast his brother as the mayor? That way we could. And so they brought his brother down to the studio, gave him the dog and pony show, walked him around, explained what they were doing, showed how cool. And like at the very end when he was leaving, Brian Doyle Murray, I guess, was like, for the record, you guys just are giving me this part to get Bill, aren't you? And like, oh, yo, and it totally worked. And then he went back and was like, I, apparently, probably was like, Bill, it's really cool. You should come do it. And he's like, all right, fine, I'll come do the fucking. Part. That's <laughs> awesome. That's smart. Um, where did I leave off? I'm sorry. Oh, so yeah, they're in the thing. Well, and they they throw the slime, hit the thing, and Bill Murray, God, boys, boys, you're scaring the straights. <laughs> Eventually, the cops come in, right, and they get them hauled out, and it's this. We got to take this to the mayor. We got to go talk to the mayor, and this is where we get Bobby Brown, right? Mm. 
on her own starts popping. Too hot to handle. Too cold. Too close, cold. Too cold. They call the Ghostbusters. They were in control. Had them throwing parties for a bunch of children. But all the while, the slime was under the building. And so they roll up to the gov- the mayor's mansion, Gracie mansion. I think that's what it is. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, and they go in there. We, they get out. Bobby Brown is there and is like, yo, Ghostbusters, can I get a you know proton pack? And he's like, Ray thinks about it. And Egon's like, proton pack's not a toy. Like, I guess he's right. Weird cameo forced in there i'm sure it was in bobby brown's contract right of like yeah i'll fucking write you a ghostbuster song i want to be right. in the goddamn movie yeah, yeah there was there was a whole thing uh where they they bobby brown was really big and so they wanted to get him to do music for the the movie and the only way to do that would be if he had a cameo in the movie and also uh the ghostbusters 2 soundtrack had to be released on the record label that oh, uh, managed him so that's how that all shook out smart um they go into gracie's mansion i'm not sure if it's here dana arrives back and finds lewis and janine making out right and lewis freaks out and his belt's undone dana and she's totally cool with it of course <laughs> and they like how was your date oh it was fine where's peter he got arrested typical uh and so it's this you know she goes to check on oscar oscar's fine uh janine and lewis are like we won't leave i'm gonna put it right here uh they hang out and annoy her that you know she's they're watching some movie and he's explaining rita hayward uh, lewis is explaining rita hayward and and dana's very much like you can go and like no no it's no big deal we'll wait we'll wait and she's like great um the boys going to talk to the mayor the mayor comes in is like you got two minutes or whatever it is they just keep making out i always thought it was crazy like how they you know, Kevin, you, you get... remember how it was when you first got together with yeah, someone? But they're like... they're like full blown adults. But I feel you know, I like feel they're like not, like early twenties. They're they're mid to late thirties. They play it very much like teenagers, which I mean, they're whatever. 40. Again, cartoon part of it, I think, right? Where it's like you know, you assume Lewis hasn't had many girlfriends, so that's why it kind of works. It's it's young love, unexperienced love, or whatever. I don't know. That's what I was talking about. Yeah. I agree that yes, get the fuck out of my yeah. house. Yeah. I, if I was dating, I'd be like, get the fuck out of the house. Yeah, <laughs> love exactly. you guys. You're great. Thanks for keeping the baby alive. Get Stop banging on, on my couch. It's yeah. Weird. Um, but anyways, uh, you know, here we go again. It's the mayor getting the pitch of what's going on here, right? Uh, River of slime. It feeds on negative emotions. I do enjoy the Dan Aykroyd, like, good evening. Uh, <laughs> it's good to see you again. I'm pleased to do a report that almost 50% of us voted for you in the last election. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great it, line. Every time he does that, it's it's fantastic. Really good. And like, so it's a very he... similar... Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, I was just saying every time he has, like he's put in front of someone of authority or yeah. a god and he has to be in the like Ahem. yeah, it, yeah, it, yeah he yeah. nails it yeah uh and so yeah again it's very close it's very similar to the you know real wrath of god stuff the mayor from the first movie i uh, explained the whole thing winston again has to get in there and explain really what's going on it's you know all this bad stuff it does all this stuff and you know the mayor's not having it and it says you know it's very similar right where it's like and then remember last time around, he wasn't going to hold a press conference and tell everybody to pray for it, pray this time around. He's not going to go on TV and tell everybody to be nice to each other, but then has the great line of like being miserable and treating everyone like uh, trash is every New Yorker's God given right. Your two minutes are up and he leaves. Right. And so this is when the ghostbusters immediately start scheming of like slime square. Oh, the press, you know, the post, they're going to want to know about this. Yada, yada, the times. Uh, and this is when uh peck, not peck is like, can you tell somebody else, tell some of our guys before you do all that downtown? Yeah. More people than uh, this is when it's the reveal that he's having them committed. Uh, you know, like whatever it is, a 48 hour psychiatric it was, hold. It was at this point that I was like, peck, not peck. Wayne's World. He's from Wayne's World. That's oh, that's he is right. from Wayne's World. Right, 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 right. Yeah, that's true. Um, and so yeah, they're admitted. Uh, you know, the whole thing is going on there. Um, we go back. This may, yeah, this must be when we go back to Dana's apartment and see the whole thing of like, oh, you can go or whatever. Oh, we go back there. There's a whole thing you can see. So somewhere before this. We ha- I missed uh, one of the cutaways would have been cutting to Vigo uh, monologuing uh, from the painting to Janos in the Circle of Candles, right? Where he's like, yeah, and he's like, yeah, I've heard all this before, which I like to, uh, the scourge. Yes, the scourge. <laughs> command me, command me, Lord. Uh, and he lays it out that tonight will be, you know, the thing of blood. And like, I need this baby and I'm going to be rebirthed. And he's like, great. And then Janos is like, yep, yep, yep. And then eventually he's like, but, and then he like leans down and starts bargaining and like playing with the fire, which is good. I like this uh, character here. I'm just like, you know, you can have the baby. That'll be great. Can I have the woman? And he's like, yes, you know, this will be perfect. You know, you, a mother to me and a wife to you. Yes. Thank you, my lord. Thank you. Um, then I'm just going to put it here. This is, yeah, we cut back to the Vankman's apartment. She goes to check on Oscar. Oscar's not there. The window's open. She looks out the window. Baby Oscar is taking his first steps out under the balcony. Fucking balcony. terrifying. The ledge, walk to the edge. She freaks out. She yells for Lewis. She climbs out there. There's a, there's a fat ledge. She should have crawled a lot faster for her kid. I, I don't even bring my kid into it yet. You know, if I come in there, Porty's on the edge 
things like that. I'm fucking <laughs> army crawling I'm saying, like dude. Kevin under a house. Shout out to this baby. Sigourney Weaver, man, this movie, not doing it for me. I no. don't like uh, like the way she's written, the way she acts. I like the chemistry between her and Bill. Like, and that's it. Like all these scenes, like your baby is in way more danger than you are acting like at any point during this scene. Hundred percent. Uh, you know, call nine one one. Lewis yells at uh, 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 Janine. Uh, then Ghost Janos comes, uh, dressed like a ghost nanny with a ghost carriage. He comes up, he scoops up Baby Oscar, puts uh, that, and then boom, shoots off. Weird, and, weird right? Yeah, but like fun. Him coming whatever. as a ghost, uh, no fun, sure. And but like, yeah, I don't know. I thought that was like, why did he turn into a ghost? Was he it's a spiritual projection? Do you think that's what it was? Oh, it's that or Vigo, you know, manifested from the slime of ghosts to do it or whatever. It's it, odd, odd. <laughs> it's odd, yes. It's, it is odd. I will give you that, Kevin. I will not argue with that. Uh, you know, Lewis yells, it was a ghost. And she's like, it's no ghost. It was Janos. He's at the museum. And so Dana rips out of there to go to the museum. Uh, I think we get a flashback in between. Not flashback. We cut over to the, the Ghostbusters who are around the table explaining everything that's going on, right? Of like, this is what's going to happen, blah, blah, blah. And eventually they go around uh, Vankman. He's like, don't look at me. I think these guys are completely nuts. <laughs> <laughs> trying to get himself off the hook while everybody else is trying to explain what's really going on. Um, um, yeah, then it's Dana. She goes into the museum. A giant slime uh, dome goes over the art museum, right? The Manhattan Art Museum. Uh, she goes in there. She finds uh, uh, Janos and the baby and Vigo. She runs over there and grabs baby Oscar and is like, I'm not going to let them do this to you. She starts, or Janos pops up and he's like, she's like, you're fucking crazy. I'm leaving. She goes to leave. Baby Oscar gets yanked by, uh, you know, uh, Vigo the, in the ghost form. Uh, she gets thrown across the way into like a, a, a cage and she's locked down there. Um, this is then right where the city was. Well, he, Janos lays it all out. Yeah, of course. No, maybe he doesn't. He just doesn't. opens the door of the cage. Not yet. Not yet. I love that. Right. Yeah. It's like, they, yeah, <laughs> whatever. We'll get to that in a second. Uh, this is where Flip City plays a great song by Glenn Frey. You should all listen to on Spotify. And it's the slime coming up from the ground and all hell breaking lace, breaking loose in New York. This is when it's pouring off the moniker of the uh, uh, theater and there's a ghost comes out of that. Uh, the woman walks through it and then her her mink coat comes back to life. I love uh, that, you thing, know, that thing was so scary to me when I was a kid. Terrifying. Mink coats, yeah. 100%. Uh, the giant thing is going through the arch. I don't know what the arch is called in New York, but the thing that looks like the Arc de Triomphe. Um, and then, yeah, this is where all hell is breaking loose. They're getting a bunch of phone calls at the police station. The one guy's like, sergeant you got to take this one he's like busy i'm like it's a dock supervisor he says the titanic just arrived and it's the titanic out there a giant ghost ship with everybody coming off of it and like you said pulling into the same pier that it left from oh cool. well that it was supposed to, arrive. Supposed to arrive. that's why he said better late than never or whatever it is the line yeah. that he said yeah, Marin again great facial uh stuff here like better late than never um and yeah the thing and the double takes and all that jazz right um i think that's the main ghost stuff we see there right and so this is now we cut back to the mayor in the ma oh wait is this it nick yeah so i have i have i have one for Kevin, you so. i will not look at it i need you to show me nick the has first... i see in slack sent us ernie hudson with a mustache i have not looked so at this the ernie hudson image. With a mustache. No, I had to pull his mustache I from. I hate you so much. I got. <laughs> There's two here. Two like two examples of this. <laughs> Hold on. Uh, the That's first one is Ernie Hudson from from Ghostbusters Two. So I pulled his mustache it. from uh, Ernie Hudson in Congo because it was thicker then, and I think yeah. it looks better here. So now, Andy, I mean, that, that looks that... awesome. Are we kidding ourselves right now? That yeah. looks amazing, right? Uh, but I did a, I did an all also, take. That's on a really this. good Photoshop. Thank you. Yeah, good that. job, Nick. Yeah. Uh, and then this is the other one that I, I just thought maybe that would be. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> That's uh, Ernie Hudson's mustache on this. the milk bottle. Uh, on the milk bottle face. Just yeah. to see God. what's going on there. Oh, he loves Queen. Um, <laughs> he does love Queen. So this is we're now we're at the mayor and it's the normal report of like everything's gone to hell. You know what I mean? And the mayor is like, all right, man, we're waiting over our head. I, uh, you know, we got to get the Ghostbusters here. And uh, uh, Peck, not Peck, is like, do we really need to get the Ghostbusters here? And he's like, I just spent an hour. I spent all last night talking to Philip LaGuardia. And I'm not saying, I know it's Lagu LaGuardia. I'm not sure what his first name is. Uh, the guy who the airport's named after, right? Yeah. And he's been dead for 30 years or whatever it is. 
Uh, and he's like, all right, cool. But, you know, where are the Ghostbusters? Goes, I had them committed under your order. What? You did one? Get him out of here. They get him out. Somebody get me the Ghostbusters. Get him out of here. Get him out of here. <laughs> I'm, I'm from New York. Wow. And so then it's the it's the Ghostbusters leaving the uh, uh, asylum, putting on all their stuff, piecing it all together. Because uh, Lewis is telling them, of course, you know, that Janos came, took the baby, took the museum. And this is Ray being like, it makes sense. You know, uh, he wants to crack in the new century. He needs a new kid. This is the thing. He's going to try to take baby Oscar. Not if we stop him. Um, um, then it's uh, uh, it's the Ghostbusters rolling up to uh, the museum. It's encased in the the slime, uh, right? They uh, get there, uh, you know, get out of the car. There are people there, of course, because in New York, whenever there's some kind of crazy world-ending event, everybody just gathers to party Africa. outside. Yeah. You know what I mean, it's New Year's Eve, I guess, but like, still, I'd be like, maybe we should remember, even if we don't believe the stuff before, there was a big explosion with the Marshmallow Man, you know. <laughs> hoax maybe we shouldn't be around here uh but they're like no they roll up to it um so they roll up there um yeah they and they, they get out there's always room for jello they have a whole conversation about jello um inside maybe before this maybe after it they do the thing we were talking about earlier where janos is walking along the cage or whatever and talking to dana and eventually you know you know they can learn to love each other blah blah and dana sees this as her out so she's like sure i could and janos just opens the door that apparently was never really locked but maybe there was psychokinetic energy holding it closed um and there's the whole thing about you know there's many benefits to being the mother of a living god you know what i mean like free parking um so th- he comes out they're all there and like uh the stuff's happening uh then we go back outside the ghostbusters are there they they turn them on they you know proton uh pack uh they you know, use the neutrino wands they throw it they're zapping the slime no dent they finally cut it the crowd immediately boos them fucking losers can't do this uh and then they're like oh man there's just too much negative energy like oh man you know, this city's so far gone it's all about the negative energy if only we had a if we what could possibly turn this around it has to be what a weird hope. theme what yeah, a totally. fucking Pure. weird th- like, what a weird answer to this problem the statue of liberty what? Right, like yeah. maybe that meant something different in the 80s but oh, like tim <laughs> tim i mean yeah. great do you want to take this one anyway <laughs> i mean there's no bigger Statue of Liberty in the 80s. <laughs> All right. The kids. Statue of Liberty. Fuck, okay, you want to be our, our, what, what is number reach, one? Let's wrap the show up. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, they, they see reach. Statue of Liberty on the license plate. They understand that that would be the thing that would get everybody's hope together. People do love the Statue of Liberty. You know what I mean? Like, it would be like if the Statue of Liberty is walking piloted by the Ghostbusters, I'm sure people would be excited. Yeah. I mean, so if this movie there, didn't happen, there wouldn't be a, you mess with one of us, you mess with all of us. It wouldn't well, have been that in Spider Man. Yeah. Yeah, I really I would say that's more attributed to 9-11 than anything else. Oh, sure. right. yeah. I just right. struggle to believe, given the logic of this movie, of the world they're in in this movie, that these people not believe in the Ghostbusters, not believe in all this stuff. Like, sure. But then the Statue of Liberty is walking down the street. That's scary. That's not something we're cheering <laughs> on. And it's like all 100%. of a sudden you're yep. like, you're oh, I, I, the, the Ghostbusters – you just didn't believe them. Was a ghost? So now your options are either you believe them and they're piloting the Statue of Liberty or you don't believe them and they're piloting the Statue of Liberty. Either way, <laughs> that's not a I'm inspired for positivity. <laughs> <laughs> but it is playing Jackie Wilson and you yeah, probably are say, drunk. You're, right, you're, right, you're right. hammered and you hear this. Your love <laughs> lifted me higher <laughs> than uh, I've ever Anyways, yeah, we, we cut over to uh, you know Liberty Island, right, where the, the boys are there, and the Vinkman has it. Makes you think, doesn't it? What if she's naked under that toga? She's French, you know. Uh, then it's them inside with their you know uh, the positively charged slime that I guess they had you know just laying around ready to go for such an occasion or whatever. Uh, they start spraying down the inside. The it's slime time. They're spraying it down, and there's it's just disgusting. They're spitting all this shit all over. Blah, 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 you know what I mean? Just all over the inside of Lady Liberty or whatever. Uh, they all rendezvous at the top. I'm sure we cut back to Dana and oh man, Oscar's Crazy getting possessed by the kid or the Vigo. And we cut back over there and they're on the top of the crown now. And like, uh, you know, they have the NES controller that they're going to use to pilot it. Uh, they have the speakers they've hooked up. They're playing, you know, hit it. Yo, love, yo, love, yo, love, yo. Keep on. And like the, you know, purple light electricity is crackling up the sides or whatever. And oh, boom, great. blows up the torch. And boom, the Statue of Liberty is now walking to Manhattan through that you know what i mean and the part though walking and like barely above the water <laughs> like yeah, they, they, they do, <laughs> did anyone <laughs> measure Stop to think that. about how deep the yeah <laughs> the was today this this plan came together quickly are we sure that the water isn't going to wash out the slime yeah. we're, gonna, we're gonna leave the statue of liberty in the goddamn water 
uh, they, they, uh, you know, they, they have the thing of them above water and like, can't we see people's face when we come ashore? We get to see Cheech Merritt again of like doing another double take at the dock. Um, yeah, it comes out of the water and it's just walking there. It's got a police escort. Everybody's stoked. You know what I mean? This time, rather than fight the big thing, they got the big thing on their side. That's why this is so different than Ghostbusters one. They step on a cop car at one point. Uh, Ray apologizes. You know, I really, we really should have patted her, her feet. I don't think they make Nikes in her size, Ray. I, I just like that the, the those two sentences compared to like, and that's why this movie is a lot more different. Seeing this one, they step on a cop car. <laughs> <laughs> they don't step on a church. They step on a cop car. This one, and the big thing is for them, not against them. Um. So yeah, they they approach. Uh, inside, Vigo's doing his business, projecting his face on a baby Oscar. Uh, Dean is held back uh, by Janos. Uh, but uh, then, uh, let me tell you, this face on the baby Oscar. Someone did not try hard on this shot. It was like, <laughs> Andy, it's like when you mask out someone to put on your face, but you forget to feather it. It was just like dead in the center, kind of a little bit squished. Like, <laughs> like they're doing that kind of thing. So, uh, yeah, uh, you know, eventually, though, they hear the singing and they can see the slime pulling back and Vigo's not having it. And, uh, you know, sensing this is her moment, Dana runs over there, grabs uh, the baby. Uh, meanwhile, we cut back to the Ghostbusters. And, you know, I love it when you roughhouse slams the torch through the thing the ghostbusters brought all their climbing gear they come down rappelling in happy new year uh they land there uh you know uh, uh yano steps in front of them uh, in front of vigo or whatever and he's like hose him they hose him slam him down um uh they get to have a conversation here for a little bit yeah yeah and then uh you know uh uh, uh dana gets grabbed by the hentai uh tube that just wraps around her uh vankman runs and puts uh uh baby oscar behind some stuff <laughs> uh vigo steps out of the painting uh you know ray has another conversation with him right uh then does the countdown and then it's one two vinkman pops up from the side immediately giving away where he put baby oscar nullifying the entire point of trying to hide the baby uh they come over though and uh they start zapping vigo for a second he feels it and then he just fires it all back at them they're all uh knocked out on the ground there right another funny one of going around of like are you okay yeah yeah vinkman i'm fine Fine, fine. <laughs> just can't move or whatever, fine. right? Uh, Dana, of course, just yelling for people to help. Uh, Vigo moves the stuff, grabs baby Oscar, walks back towards the ritual table, and this is where Vinkman like t- worms over to him and starts to say, You'd be living the sweet life in Southern California's San Fernando Valley, Beautiful San Fernando Valley, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Vigo just looks at him and goes, Gosh, goosh, and zaps them. They they're all in immense pain. <laughs> and Vinkman just darn, a great darn. reaction from Vinkman, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and so it looks like uh, Vigo's gonna get away with the whole thing, but what is happening? ladies and gentlemen outside on new year's with statue of liberty collapsed next to them all the drunks are singing uh you know old lang syne or whatever the fuck and like that's enough of like the positivity is in the air it's nullifying <laughs> the salon and vigo can't handle and so the boys start to feel like they can move again right and so they move and they you know start getting over there and then vigo drops baby oscar but vankman's there to catch baby oscar and then uh you know it's like oh man and so they, uh, Vigo gets pushed back in the painting, right? Or they zap him back in the painting. See, but yeah, this gets- needed, this needed, I know we're long in the tooth on this one, but this needed to be like, like an elf moment, right? Where Zoe, uh, De Chanel starts singing and then everyone starts singing with her. Like she's the cow. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And then the whole world starts singing and then that power of Santa and then everyone sees it. And it's like, oh my God, we believe in Christmas again. This was just always so weird that a bunch of drug people were like looking at this terrified blob and are like, Let's just start singing. You guys happy? I'm happy. Let's go to bar. I guess. It's weird. Anyways, Vigo gets pushed back in the painting. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, and they're all like, they're all ready to shoot it or whatever. And then Ray steps in front of it and Ray gets possessed. He turns around. I am Ray. Vigo. All right. They hose Ray with the slime, knock him down. Uh, He falls away. That pushes Vigo back in the painting. They keep hosing down Vigo in the painting and he's just taking the face because he can't use his hands. He's taking his face. And they're zapping the painting all at once. And then the painting explodes. I hated that. Like, I th- this scene really stuck out to me as a kid because it was horrifying. The imagery of Vigo being Double all just shit. fucked up and like monster fied, it was terrifying as a kid. Sure. Terrifying now. Good lord. Did you have trouble sleeping last night? No, I mean, I watched it earlier today and I tried to take a nap. Post. 
no, I mean, he's not protected by the real Ghostbusters. You know what I mean? This yeah. kid doesn't know what's up over there. Um, so they, the painting blo- blows up, right? And all wells that it, all's well. Oh, I forgot. Oh, fuck. I'm sorry. We buried the whole thing of Lewis. Yeah. When all hell was breaking loose, like, right? Lewis was back at the firehouse and Janine zips him up in the stuff. And he, he guess I was born to wear this stuff. And you fucking bet your ass it. every time I put on a, a Ghostbuster suit, I say that fucking thing. Uh, and then, of course, there's a big reveal of the doors <laughs> opening. Loser. And he just jogged out in full, <laughs> full dress. <laughs> <laughs> Jogs on full dress, runs to the, the bus uh, stop, right? Uh, Slimer picks him up. All right, but I didn't know you had your license. Uh, then he got there. He pushed through. Ghostbusters, Ghostbusters. He zapped the thing. When he finally zaps it is when they beat the thing. So it all goes away. And the people outside celebrate with Lewis as if, if he actually does it. I did it. I'm a Ghostbuster. <laughs> <laughs> Great fucking line. Uh, we come back inside. Uh, what's right? the quickest answer to this question? Oh, is the real Ghostbusters cartoon canon or not? No, it's not. It's not canon. No. Okay. But they just like took a lot from it for this totally. movie. Yeah, okay. yeah, the money maker. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah let's make it. Got it. Money. Yeah. Um. And, you know, I mean, at that point, you you obviously, if you're a kid, you spent way more time with the real Ghostbusters than you did the Ghostbusters, right? Mm-hmm. In terms of like stuff the toys, matter. all the toys. Yeah. Yeah. Toys exactly. Well, I mean, just you I know, don't want twenty minute episodes, right? It, it adds up pretty quick to dethrone the two hour movie you saw or whatever. Um, Lewis does that back inside. Uh, you know uh vankman and uh dana have that that kiss or whatever where she comes out and he goes uh, what is it scoot out of the way short fry or something like that right and pushes baby oscar out of the way so he can make out with his mom nice um a great nice. sign that he's gonna be a, a good dad you he's know gonna I mean? be like, a great dad you know what i mean like, i look no. forward to seeing baby oscar as full-blown oscar That's in not this, a marriage in, in that works afterlife. out right no i mean for sure if the marriage works out the kid is gonna be very bad i guarantee <laughs> you in ghostbusters afterlife they are together that they they never broke up that they were together from here on out Guaranteed. Damn, I could have sworn this movie came out a lot later than it did. Um, the I forget who gets up first, but Ray gets up. We'll say, and he's covered in slime, and he feels great. I love you, man. I love you. Blah blah. And they and then they go to get Janos, and Janos is like, then they come. In the slime, they get him up, and this thing. Let me tell you something. I love you. You know what? I love you too. No man, I love you. Yeah, yeah, right. Uh, and then oh, then it's uh, I was gonna say Winston has this moment like I love this town, but it's different. But he's the one who walks by, looks at the painting, and goes, "What? Hey guys, take a look at this." They all come over there and they do the whole thing of like, you know, I think it was this or the Renaissance." Well, and Vankman shows up and goes, "No, I believe it was the Fettuccini Brothers." Uh, and it, it, turn it around, the Ghostbuster song proper plays. It is the Ghostbusters with Baby Oscar in the painting, and then we get our montage to end the movie of them coming out very much like Ghostbusters 1, celebrating with the crowd, the throng of people, waving at everybody out there, and we get the run-through of everybody with some deleted scenes, some stuff like that. And Slimer gets a credit, too, because everybody loves Slimer, of course. The kids were going to fucking love Slimer. Slimer. Seeing this, the, the painting, the original Game of Regretti show painting, yeah. I, I was just kind of bewildered by it because I didn't yeah. expect it, totally forgot about that. And then when it came up and just how quick it was there, like it's kind of a weird thing to be to exist in the world. But then I was also like, wow, this felt like such a big deal in my life. And, and that's all that it is. It's just like two seconds of this movie. And but, what a, I mean, like, what a uh, fucking amazing job by Panda Musk. If yeah, you don't remember this, Panda years and years ago, the, the original oh, uh, founders in Portillo in this exact same thing. It's so incredibly good. It's, yeah. it's, it's yeah. wild because, like, I had no frame of reference for that. I, I don't remember that poster. I I just thought it was, like, something you all did. <laughs> <laughs> That's hella nice. funny. That's wild. Uh, uh, it's and so also- montage, everything's going on. Just sorry, just put it to bed for the plot recap. Montage, some deleted okay. scenes and stuff, cool stuff of Andy Potts with the ghost traps and shit like that that I would love to have seen in the movie. And then it's the very end of uh, them back on Liberty Island. Uh, you know, uh, New York loves the Ghostbusters. They're getting the key to the city. Everybody's there, and then they pan out, and it's the uh, uh, Statue of Liberty there, and you know, a nice shot of Manhattan in the background, and that's Ghostbusters too. Sorry, Kevin. Uh, I was just gonna talk about the history of like, can you imagine that like they had to put an addendum to like the Vigo painting, then the Vigo painting disappeared, and they brought over the, like this appeared. like the little plaque is like five yeah. times longer than it needed to be to explain all the shit that happened to that painting. <laughs> <laughs> I did funny. not understand what you were doing, and now yeah. that I do, hilarious. thank you, Nick. Thank you. You're like, this is an odd one, or this is like fucking three paragraphs long. <laughs> Seven syllables in the middle. You'll need five for the first and last line. If you're not poetic, no need to fret it. Haikus don't need to rhyme. Haiku in review. Haiku in review. You can go to patreon.com slash kind of funny to write your reviews in haiku form, just like 
okay soda did. Greg, you need to know. Babies can't have French bread za. That's a big no no. Mike L in the chat. Which is that yeah, yeah. Gave him some French, suck on the French bread pizza. Bit, knocked him right out. Yeah. Oh, yeah. right. Got it. Gave him a little bit of French bread pizza. Knocked him right out. God bless Mike L in the chat, which is just such a fantastic name, says, uh, so you're telling me Egon fucked that slime. His poor epididymis. <laughs> Ooh. <laughs> Another, yeah, it was a great job. I think they're more impressed with the epididymis and Bill Murray. And then, like, the slow realization he does not know what he's talking about. <gasps> and then, uh, Cozy Bear writes in saying, That slime is a dreck. Lady Liberty's a mech painting full of pecs. There we go. There we go. Remember, uh, we got Ghostbusters 2016 that I need you guys to write your reviews in haiku form. So, please, Patreon people, if you did that, I'd appreciate it very, very much. Hit me, Andy. Ragu. Bagu. What's up, everybody? Welcome to Rad Guys Talk Bad Guys, the podcast within a podcast where we rank all the ghost villains of the Ghostbusters cinematic universe. Uh, so far, of course, we only have Gozer and Walter Peck as the number one villains of Ghostbusters. Uh, gentlemen, where do we want to put Vigo and Janos? Number two. Number two. Yeah. All right. Yeah, I love as a but, character, but but Vigo is just so generically bad. He doesn't do anything. He's bad. I honestly don't think it's that big of a gap. I do think it's number two, but like I think the villains are number one. Like I, I am baffled for how like shitty the bad guy story is in number one for a movie about Ghostbusters. Like where like these guys are good guys that take down bad guys, and the yeah. bad guys are ghosts. The bad ghosts are. It, it feels weirdly convoluted and not interesting, but I agree that this one is even more convoluted and even less interesting. To me, it boils down to like when I was a kid watching it, Gozer was scary. Gozer was weird, and I didn't understand what the heck's going on. And she had the cool the flat top. I thought I thought the Keymaster, all that stuff was freaky, man. It was like weird to me that people could get possessed and like have to do all this stuff. And then the terror dogs were like terrifying to me. In this, it's just kind of an old balding guy walking around a little bit. That's the best that could be said for the, the bad uh, guy in Ghostbusters yeah. too. I think, yeah, you talk about like, you know, both villains kind of just show up at the end and then do their thing, which is weird or whatever. But at least like, you know, you talked about last week, Tim, right? Of like when you actually got the exposition of like Evo Shandor and this thing and Gozer worshippers and all that whether the movie did it really well or not or something like it was explaining what was leading us here whereas like us with this river of slime right like was it always there is that a thing like what's going like how did yeah. it get there how did they know to put it there how did Vigo know to line like that's why I think yeah like even even more so than last time right they're not that well of like a thought out real absolutely yeah All so right. there we go okay there you go number two number one right. goes your Walter Peck number two Vigo and Janos and now it's time to rank the Ghostbusters. Uh, number yeah, one, Vegas. yeah. Number one is number one, and number two is number two. Does anyone disagree <laughs> with that? No. <laughs> yeah, you got it. I wonder where number three is going to land. Yeah. Number four. Yeah, I, I just I found myself just I, I was um, focused and much more entertained from front to back with part one than I was at this one. Again, the attention and entertainment factor slowly waned throughout the throughout the rest of the movie and that's unfortunate because i had a lot of fun near the beginning of it yeah this one i think had higher highs for me but definitely way lower lower le way lower lows and it just kind of falls off a cliff in the the not even third act just kind of like maybe like 60 percent through this movie yeah it's like boom there we go number one ghostbusters number two ghostbusters two where will ghostbusters 2016 fall you'll have to wait and find out i'm sure everybody's thrilled and excited about that but until then i love you all goodbye